I am ready. I am ready. I'm ready. Ready to take the next step. Take the next step. To bust my tail every, every day. day. Putting on a show. To, to play, play with the best. best. To play with the best. You don't get much better than that. Ready to prove that I belong. I belong. I come from Wisconsin, New York, Ohio, the plains of Kansas, Georgia, the great state of Texas. They come from Serbia and Montenegro to make the next great, great pass. pass. To hear the fans chant my name. To hear the fans chant my name. 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 To hit the shot with the game on the line. Got it! To fulfill my life on my dream. My dream. Look at me! You can't stop me today! I will honor the great while seeking greatness. 33 pounds, but are coming to the ridiculous jam. I will put myself to the limit. I have the will, the power, and the desire to be the best. I have come with the purpose. I am ready to dominate. Ready to dominate. That's all over, baby. what I've been working on. Right between the eyes. Ready to feel the pressure. Come up, B. Stay down, my man, and say, I got you. I got you. I cannot be stopped. I cannot be stopped. I, 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 I am ready. If you make it onto that marquee, you've made it in sports. The world's most famous arena is Madison Square Garden and the theater attached to MSG, hosting the 2003 class for the NBA draft. Who will be the superstars in that picture down the line? David Stern has posed in many a class over the years, but the people of New York and the fans of the NBA want a front row seat to be here the night Carmelo Darko. And some guy named LeBron officially entered the NBA. We welcome you to our ESPN coverage. Proud and privileged at ESPN to be a part of one of the more interesting and exciting drafts of any sport in recent memory because of the unprecedented hype for one person entering a league. Hi, everyone. Mike Tirico, along with my buddies Tom Tolbert, Greg Anthony, and Jay Billis. We are joined throughout the night on our draft coverage by a host of people, including Dick Vitale and Jim Gray in Florida and Cleveland. Jimmy with the first pick. Also, we're joined by Michelle Tafoya and Stu Scott here in the draft headquarters. And David Aldridge and Andy Katz are all over the news. Couple of points we want to keep you in mind. All night, down here in this corner, going to be the clock. Who's on the clock? You'll find out here. Bottom of the screen. Who is being selected in the draft, constant draft order. Down this side, what we call the matrix. When it highlights your team, you'll see information. The draft, who's been picked, what picks are coming up, what their free agency situation is, some trivia about the team. You'll also see polls. When you see the word Jay come up in the highlighted box, that's Jay Billis's list of best available players. Jay has scouted many of the players in this draft who will be selected, just like the GMs around the NBA have. The headlines of draft 2003 it starts right at the top. In all likelihood, the first three picks are going to be players age 18 or 19. We've never had the top three under 20 in the history of the NBA draft. The continuing international flavor should be of record proportions this year. 14 is the international record for a draft taken last year. We think it will be more than that tonight. And is this a deep draft? Well, there is strength. Picks 10 through 20. The question is, does he fit your team now? Will you develop him down the line? A developing story on ESPN.com in the last couple of hours regarding Michael Jordan. Ironic of the night, LeBron James comes into the league in the year Michael Jordan came out of the league. Michael is making some news on draft night as the conversations towards Michael's ownership of the Milwaukee Bucks seem to have heated up on the rumor mill. Let's bring in David Aldridge. David, is it any closer or are just the rumors starting to pile on top of each other here on draft night? Well, Michael, it's close. I mean, there's no question that it's close, but... I can tell you, Herb Cole, within the last two hours, has let people know, let senior officials around the league know, that there's no deal as of yet. Now, does that mean it's going to, it couldn't change in the next 
24 hours or the next week or so, of course it could change. But the Bucks, who I talked to an hour ago in their war room, say it's full speed ahead. They're going to make the pick. They're going to decide who they have to want to take. They do not have to run anything past Michael Jordan or any of Michael Jordan's people. They're ready to go. So in all likelihood, Ernie Grunfeld in Milwaukee will be making this pick. David, the top three have been set for a long time. Doesn't mean it won't be an exciting moment when they're taken, but the hot spot in the draft is Toronto at four. Are they getting any calls, or are they going to keep the pick? Well, Mike, they've gotten some calls, but uh, I talked to Toronto about 20 minutes ago. Nothing that really blew their doors off. So as of right now, they're committed to keeping the fourth pick and making a decision on one of the young big men or perhaps T.J. Ford. Oh, Jay Billis, let's talk about those big men. We have Kamen and Bosch. A couple of names have been thrown out there. Explain to us why they are worthy up at the four spot. Well, because they're both extremely talented. It's a question of whether you want to wait or whether you need immediate help. If you're willing to wait for a player to develop, you go with Chris Bosch because he may have the most potential outside the big three to be great. A very high ceiling. He is skilled, can step away from the basket. A 6'11", left-handed shot blocker, can really change ends. An outstanding passer, rebounds at a very high high rate the only question is he tough enough and can he put on weight to play inside Chris Kamen out of Central Michigan offensively very advanced can use either hand around the basket and can really score inside average over 20 points per game can catch can run the question is is he tough enough to be able to put on weight and can he rebound at a high rate and will he have the pride to really step forward and play defense on the NBA level I think that he can Greg Anthony, there's pressure for a lot of these teams. Do you go up and get a guy who may make an impact on your team right now, especially in some of the conferences where there's wiggle room to get into the playoff picture just like that? Well, definitely. If you think about that fourth pick and you're talking about the Toronto Raptors, the fact that they can go out and maybe bring in a Chris Bosh or a Chris Kamen, this is a team, although they didn't make the playoffs last year, they're very close. A healthy Vince Carter, uh, a new coach, a new uh, um, amount of enthusiasm there. You bring in a guy who can score in the paint, that makes you a much more viable product in the Eastern Conference. And Tom, if you were Toronto, would you add Chris Kamen as a piece at number four? Well, that, that's the great thing about the Eastern Conference. Everybody's close to the playoffs. No one's that far away from the playoffs. Look, their best players are their point guard, Avin Williams, off guard, Morris Peterson, and Vince Carter. You need to get bigger up front. Antonio Davis has been playing out of position at the center. If they get Cayman, look, the Eastern Conference doesn't have powerhouse centers, so you're one leg ahead of everybody else. If you do have a center that can get in there, help you on the glass, and score a little bit for you. And Cayman might be able to come right in. Well, we can't talk about the best players in college basketball during the year without our colleague Dick Vitale, who's joining us from his home down in Florida. Dick, tell me the two guys, if you were in the draft room, that you would stand up, pound the table, and be passionate about joining your team. I'll tell you one thing, Mike. You know I try to get passionate about things I love. Bottom line is this could be a draft of mystique. That'll be the theme, the unknown. We don't know about a lot of these players, but there's two that I do know a lot about. One is Carmelo Anthony. I think Carmelo had experience of playing 36 minutes a night, pressure situations. I think he is going to be a superstar. I think Denver's going to be very fortunate, and I also think down the line, I certainly could comprehend the decision of the Pistons to go for Darko because they they need size, but the bottom line is, I think they may come to regret not making that call to Mr. Stern, Carmelo Anthony. And the other kid, I don't want to hear about size. We're not talking the Olympics. We're not talking 100 meters. We're not talking bodybuilding. We're talking basketball. T.J. Ford, in today's game, you need an orchestra leader. You need a creator and an innovator. He's all Thomas Edison. I know one thing. He'll go north to south, and guys will not stay in front of him. T.J. Ford will improve his shooting. I believe that Ford and Carmelo will be special. Hey, change the name of the NBA from NBA to GBA, the Global Basketball Association. Well, it is becoming a global game, and David Stern says by 2010, still a likelihood that there will be a team not based in the continental U.S. or North America. That's for down the road. The immediate concern for T.J. Ford is, Am I going to go four, five, six? Am I going to slide because of the height question? Let's ask him. He's standing by with our Stuart Scott. Stu? The Naismith and Wooden Award winner, the only freshman to ever lead the nation in assist, and everybody's questioning you. TJ, what goes through your mind when you hear, too short, can't shoot? Well, I just know I always believe in myself, and I don't let anyone um, just tell me I can't do something. So people say I can't shoot, but I just like to have fun and enjoy the game, and eventually, you know, things will work out the best for me. What do you feel like you have to prove? Uh, I just have to prove that I can get better every year. And as long as I just increase my game every year, every, every time I step on the court and just get my best, 
I, mean, I don't think you guys for anything more. All right, everybody calls him TJ. I just call him Terrence Gerard, <laughs> his given name. Michelle Tafoya now standing by with another first rounder. Kirk Heinrich, Michelle. Yeah, Kirk Heinrich and TJ Ford, really the two point guards that everyone is talking about. Kirk, when you've been to your workouts and you've had nine of them, what did you feel you were having to prove to these teams looking at you? Well, I think, you know, I just want to go in and prove that uh, I can play on this level. I think you want your career to, to talk for itself, but it's also important to go in and impress the people. You and Nick uh, Collison here together, uh, people have a hard time separating you two because of the Kansas tie. You told me a minute ago you're pretty nervous. How do you feel about what you're going to see here tonight, not only for yourself, but for him? Well, I'm really happy for him. You know, I've, I've played with him a long time. You know, that's my guy. And, you know, I just hope the best for him. Your parents make this trip. They made just about every other road trip. Yeah, they're here and they're real proud of me. You know, I'm glad they made it. They should be. Good luck to you. We'll see you tonight. What happens for Kirk Heinrich right now? Dwayne Wade is with Stuart Scott, too. June 26, 2003, draft day. Hot at February 2nd, 2002. Better prepare you for this day. Uh, it made me more mature. My son was born on that day. Uh, after, my son was born a little while after that, after we beat Cincinnati at home, a big game, so it made me mature. You've known your wife, Savan, since you all were in the fifth grade. What has she told you today that's going to calm your nerves a little bit? None. <laughs> you didn't need it? No, I'm, uh, I'm Have cool. you calmed her nerves? Yeah, I'm trying to calm hers. I'm cool. You know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm just happy to be here, and I'm ready to, you know, to get up there and shake David's third hand and move on. Dwayne Wade, he was academically ineligible as a freshman. He worked his way to a 3.0 GPA, Mike, the highest in Marquette's starting five. And led Marquette to a Final Four appearance. We'll take you to Cleveland, get to know a little bit better guys by the name of Darko, Carmelo, and LeBron as we get set to hear from the guys you've heard from and the other big names and welcome a new generation to the NBA on Draft Night 2003. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Carmelo Anthony. I'm Dwayne Wade. I'm Chris Bosh. America, you're watching the NBA Draft on ESPN. On ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> ESPN's exclusive coverage of the 2003 NBA Draft is brought to you by Verizon Wireless. Sign up to get NBA Draft alerts sent right to your mobile phone. Sprite, obey your thirst. And Nintendo GameCube, born to play. We welcome you back to the theater at Madison Square Garden working towards the 2003 NBA Draft. And there is LeBron James, who is set to make the 40-mile move from Akron to Cleveland, Ohio. You know, Cleveland, Ohio, if you haven't been there, is a city of great sports passion. They love their Browns. You think of the cardiac kid Browns, Brian Sipton, Bernie Kosar, go back to the days of Jim Brown. They love the Indians when they made that World Series run. They came up just a half inning short against the Florida Marlins. But Cleveland always has the rug pulled out from under it. Tonight, it's a Cleveland night to celebrate sports. One of Ohio's own, in a very prideful Midwestern state, comes to a team of their own. LeBron James to the Cavs. Jim Gray's in Cleveland with the owner of the NBA franchise there, Gordon Gunn. Jim. Mike, there's quite a euphoric feeling going on here tonight in Cleveland. The stadium out here, Gund Arena, is full. We're joined by Gordon Gund, as you say. Gordon has suffered now for 33 years with retinitis pigmentosa. He is blind and has lost his eyesight 33 years ago. Gordon, I'd like to ask you, in your mind's eye, what does LeBron James look like to you? Well, he, he, first of all, he, he, uh, he's big and strong and very athletic. Uh, tr I guess can pass uh, tremendously well. And he also looks like somebody who's, who's really got it together. He's got a real humility and a good character. So all of those things. You've been burdened in the past, the very famous shot of Michael Jordan over don't, Craig Elo. Don't remind me. <laughs> Does LeBron at all feel in your senses like Michael? Well, he does. I haven't had the chance to be uh, uh, be close with up on him playing basketball at that kind of level, but I, he certainly he has the potential to, in my mind. What does this mean for this town, and what does this mean for your business? How many season tickets have you sold? Well, we've had a significant increase in the number of season tickets we've sold. We still have some tickets, so anybody who is very interested, please be sure and hurry and let us know. But it, for the town, it's been terrific because. Uh, the fans have had, as you well know, a bad time of it lately, as has the franchise. And, it, and the fans really deserve this, and I'm excited. Most of all, I'm excited for them. If there's one player in the league that a team would have called and said you can have, would you have traded this pick? There is no player, Jim, for whom we would have traded this pick. 
I, I, they, there isn't a whole team. We're very excited to have this player, and we believe he, he's going to give this, this marketplace a great future of exciting basketball. That's saying an awful lot, Gordon. It is, but uh, that's how I feel. You know, otherwise, if I, if, I, if I didn't, I'd probably be run out of town. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gordon. These are going to go on sale, Mike Tirico. The number 23 jersey, the new crimson colors of the Cavaliers, they go on sale in about 15, 20 minutes. They are lined up around the block. They probably won't have enough. Back to you in New York. Jim, they'll go from the bottom third of merchandise in the league. I would guess to the upper half, maybe the upper third. It's not just the New Jersey. It's the guy who's going to be wearing that number 23, as he does in tribute to Michael Jordan. Dick Vitale, you got to see some of LeBron James' high school games. He seems to have, Dick, in addition to all the basketball, that special it that makes stars superstars. I tell you, Mike, I was so in awe watching him. I thought I was watching a rock star, the way he handled himself. In fact, he was much better than I even expected. I mean, it was incredible. I remember getting a call years ago from Mr. Garfinkel of the Five Star Camp. He told me he had a 15-year-old that dominated both his leagues, the NBA and the college division, and that's never been done before. Then he went to the big stage at Adidas and marched on and became incredible in Nike camp as well. Bottom line is, this kid has lived up to all the expectations he has that special instinct feel for the game i'm going to my silver anniversary at espn 25 years he's the best high school player i have ever seen in my 25 years man and he's got that charisma with a box office and the cash register is going to go ding a ling ding because he's got that smile mr tarico just like you it's the ding a ling ding to go with the bling and everything else that will make Cavs games an event now in cleveland jay billis you did some of those games with Dick. Basketball-wise, does LeBron have everything that everybody's building him up to have? Yeah, he's just as skilled as Kobe Bryant or Kevin Garnett at the same age, but he is far more physically imposing. And, Mike, I'll tell you, I don't think any reasonable basketball person would take anyone else number one than LeBron James in this draft. It's an absolute no-brainer. He's got what it takes to be a great, a great NBA player, and I think he will be. Greg, if you were advising LeBron, what would you tell him the toughest thing ahead for him is? Well, I think he has to be patient. I think the expectation level is so high for LeBron right now. Everyone has put him up there in the stratosphere. He just has to be patient and allow the game to come to him. I think the only way, the only way he fails is if he fails to meet our expectations. I would just say this to the fans and the media. Let's not create LeBron's legacy. Let him create one for himself. The exciting part is, even though we know where he's going, it's still the official step tonight. And to watch a guy who's come from tough upbringing to great success, it's a pretty special night in his life. And we'll be here to share it when that first pick comes in a little bit. Darko Milicic should be the next pick from the Detroit Pistons. We will talk about Darko and the international impact that has become the NBA draft as we continue from New York on Draft Night 2003. I am ready. Back on draft night from the crossroads of the world, Times Square, New York City, just 10 blocks away from Madison Square Garden, the 2003 NBA draft first pick coming up at the bottom of the hour. Darko Milicic will likely be the second pick, he of uh, the Detroit Pistons in all likelihood, from a war torn part of the world, Serbia and Montenegro, continuing a long stretch as we now have 67 international players in the NBA, and that number should grow with a record if we get 15 or more players taken tonight. Jay Billis, uh, why is a guy named Darko, who only played about 20 minutes per game, didn't play more than 30 games overseas, why is he worthy of the number two pick tonight? Simply put, Mike, he's a freak, and I mean that in the most positive way. He's seven foot tall, he's a left-hander, and he's got a seven foot five inch wingspan. He is absolutely an incredible athlete when he gets out on the floor with this combination of size, skill, and athleticism. He gets off his feet, he can shoot the ball from the perimeter, and he's very clever with his inside moves. He's only 18 years old, and he's only been 18 for a few days. This guy has got a tremendous amount of potential, and he's got the potential to be great. If not for LeBron James, Darko Milicic would be the number one pick in most every draft in the last 10 years. He'll likely go to Greg, where will we see the big influx of internationals? Well, you're going to start to see that 
that play out in the second half of the first round, particularly because that's where you're going to have teams that are a little bit more capable in terms of their overall personnel. Then they're just trying to fit a guy into a certain spot, allow him to grow and develop and mature. Tom, there are people out there who say, well, I'm not going to bother paying attention because I don't know how to pronounce their names. I don't know what kind of team Hemo Farm is that Milicic plays for. What do you think of this international influx? I think it's fun. I mean, you get guys like Asal, you get guys like Nowitzki, you get Stojakovic, you get Hito Turkoglu, and there's going to be more of these guys can come out. I'm just wondering if you're a GM right now, how you get through this. I mean, these guys are young. They're playing in different countries. You got, I mean, I'm waiting for the day where we start, like, scouting embryos. It's like, oh, he had a great ultrasound. We're going to take him in the first round. He could be I, a GM right now. You just got to be going nuts. You have to have strong ownership that allows you to have a presence internationally to be able to do these things. You can close your eyes to it. The international influx has made the quality of play better, and it's something we'll discuss throughout the night, the impact on the NBA. Getting closer to the first pick is Draft Night 2003 answers questions for some anxious young men. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Chris Bosh. I'm Dwayne Wade. I'm Darko Miritich. And you're watching NBA Draft. Oh, all right, so I can kind of... <laughs> <laughs> what's the line again? <laughs> and you're watching the NBA Draft on ESPN. Time for a GMC Draft moment. If we're talking about the top three being taken in this draft, let's go back to some of the recent best one, two, threes. Akeem Olajuwon taken with the number one pick in 84, a career that had almost spanned two decades. And of course, the infamous number two pick of Sam Bowie, whose foot leg injury problems held him back, but still he would have been the asterisk to Michael Jordan. Without question, the best number three pick in the history of the NBA draft. Jordan hanging it up after his fabulous career came to an end this year in Washington. And 11 years ago, Shaquille O'Neal from Orlando was the number one pick. Remember, he didn't lead the Magic to the finals. Alonzo Mourning, who still holds out hope of coming back to the NBA. One of the interesting free agent pictures this year. And a man still in the league. He's with Washington this year, Christian Leitner. That a recent successful 1-2-3. All were all-stars. You'll see a 1-2-3 two, three they talk about for years are GMC draft moments. Chris Bosch could make it a one, two, three, four. Will he be the number four selection? Toronto has that pick. Chris Bosch has an anxious half hour or so to wait. Carmelo Anthony saying hi to his many fans. His college coach Jim Beheim sitting behind him. And LeBron James, he's on deck. The Cavs will be on the clock. The pick start when you come back. I am ready. I'm ready. Ready to dominate. Showing what I've been working on. Right between the Ready to feel the pressure. Come up, B. Hammers it down. He got it. Stay down, my man. And say, I got you. I got you. I cannot be stopped. I cannot be stopped. I, 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 I am ready. There are so many names that if you watch college basketball, hook them horns, TJ Ford led Texas to higher basketball places than they've seen in a half century. Nick and Kirk, what a job they did in Lawrence for four years, and now the Jayhawks will move on to the NBA. Kirk Heinrich sitting there. What a great story from Iowa to KU, and now together they sit here in New York tonight. Jarvis Hayes, he's been attached almost to his twin Jonas for their entire basketball lives. Tonight, Jarvis takes the step from Georgia on to the league. How about the youngster with Dwayne Wade sitting and waiting? The draft is set to begin. And for that, the commissioner of the NBA, David Stern, will take to the podium to begin the proceedings officially. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the NBA Draft at the Theater at Madison Square Garden. In New York City, home of the Knicks, the WNBA's Liberty, and this year's WNBA All-Star Game on July 12th. To our fans here in the United States watching on ESPN, to our fans watching in 212 countries and logging on to NBA.com around the world, thank you for joining us. To our fans gathered here tonight, our very enthusiastic and interested fans, thank you for coming. The first pick 
in the 2003 NBA draft will be made by the Cleveland Cavaliers, who have five minutes to make this selection. And LeBron James will sit for the next few minutes, the most comfortable wait for a number one pick. If you couldn't hear what the fans were chanting, they were chanting, Fire Layden, talking about Scott Layden, GM of the Knicks. The Knicks will pick ninth, and we'll talk about that when it comes around because it will be an interesting atmosphere here in the theater. But the move that LeBron James is about to make from high school to the NBA, Amari Stoudemire, the number nine overall pick by Phoenix last year, from a number standpoint, did it as well as anybody ever in the history of the league. Tough to make that early impact. Jay Billis, what, as you break down LeBron James' game, gives him the skill set to join Stoudemire making the move high school to the pro. Well, I think, Mike, first you start with his body. LeBron James has an NBA body. He is prepared from a physical standpoint to make this jump to the NBA as prepared as any high school player has ever been. Six, seven and a half, 240 pounds plus. He is strong and an absolute man. He is an extraordinary passer, a Magic Johnson type passer that can really see the floor and de deliver the ball. He is easy to play with. He will be a great teammate because he he doesn't need to score in order to impact a basketball game. He's also got explosion ability. LeBron James can get to the basket. He can rise up and finish once he gets there with that great athleticism. And he's got the handle and the first step in order to get to the hole. What does he need to improve upon? His defensive concentration. He needs to involve himself in more plays, not just hang back. He does defend. He needs to do a better job. And he's got to refine his shot. He is not a good jump shooter, but he shoots a good ball and he shoots it with ease from range. I think with work on that jump shot, LeBron James can be a good jump shooter. He has got the complete package, the most prepared high school player ever, at least since Moses Malone, to jump into this league and play right away. How good will he be, guys? I think he's going to be tremendous. He's definitely going to be a Hall of Famer. Unless he gets injured, he has too much upside not to be great. Didn't we all cherry pick in high school? <laughs> Do we have to pick that one out? I cherry picked. I know that. It was fun. You can dunk. It's a, an amazing story of a young man who's gone from tough times to great success and the crowning moment for LeBron James. Something he's dreamed about his whole life is about to happen. We'll go up to the podium and Commissioner Stern for the first pick this year. With the first pick, in the 2003 NBA Draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select LeBron James. There he is with his mom, Gloria. Gloria sacrificed a lot. Gave birth to LeBron when she was 16 on their own at 19, living on assistance, food stamps, and here they are just a short time later, $100 million in contract, endorsements in basketball, and LeBron James makes a great American story from tough times to tremendous success. The second player from high school selected first overall, Kwame Brown, of the Washington Wizards doing it a couple of years ago. High school games on national TV, and what has been the most impressive to me is how he's handled the unprecedented hype. Well, you know what's amazing to me is we are actually going to see LeBron James jerseys. We're going to see Cleveland Cavalier jerseys in Montana, in L.A., in New York, in Chicago. And his impact is not just going to be on the court. It's going to be, able to, it's going to be felt all across the landscape of America. You know, you gotta love this guy too in terms of his poise and the way he's really handled himself through all this adversity. I mean, this is a great moment for him and his family, obviously, but also for the city of Cleveland. It is for Cleveland as well, and here is LeBron James on the Sprite set with Michelle Tafoy. Mike, thanks. LeBron, this was a moment years in the making, and even though you knew you were gonna be the top pick in the draft, you said you weren't sure how you'd feel when David Stern actually called your name. So I have to ask you, <laughs> what was the moment like? Uh, it was great. You know, this is a long time dream to finally accomplish this, and it finally shows that the hard work has finally paid off for me. And a lot lies ahead. You will most certainly be the most scrutinized rookie in the history of the NBA. What will make a successful season by your definition in the rookie year? You know, seeing our team get better every day. 
I think that's going to be the biggest accomplishment for us because last year we won pretty good. But if I feel like we get better every day as a team, that's going to be my biggest goal this year. There has been some talk that they might want to play you at the point guard. <laughs> what do you think? I think I'm going to be ready for it. You know, for anything that Coach Siles need me to do for my team to win, I think I'm going to be happy about it. You threw out to Carmelo Anthony. Basically game on. Let's buy for rookie of the year. Let's compete. Why will you win that contest? You know, I think, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to win the contest. I just think that I'm just going to try to get my teammates better. You know, I'm not looking for individual things. I'm all about the team. Well, the team wears this jersey on the road, LeBron. Here it is. Enjoy it. All right, Cavs fans back at home. Mike, back Pops, what up? Ohio's own LeBron James becomes the first player taken in the number one overall selection who was born in the same state of the team that picked it. Now the Detroit Pistons are on the clock at number two. We've talked about Darko Milicic, but we should get the perspective on Detroit being in the two spot. It is rare in NBA history that a team picks this high after winning 50 games. And I don't think there was a lot of sleep loss on August 7 of 1997 when Otis Thorpe, a veteran, was moved to the then Vancouver Grizzlies. And the Pistons received a first-round pick down the line, which was delayed and delayed. They would not have gotten it this year if it was the number one overall pick. And there was Jerry West sitting there at the draft lottery knowing, I'm going to get LeBron James or nothing. He ended up with nothing. The Detroit Pistons have the pick, and a 50-win team has a chance to add a very impressive international piece who not everyone knows about, Jay, but has 7-1 size plus ability to play other positions. And you give credit to Rick Sund, who's now with the Seattle Supersonics, for making that, that trade that got Darko Milicic right now if they decide to pick him. And Milicic has tremendous upside. Seven feet tall. He has a 7-foot, 5-inch wingspan, and he's only 18 years old. A very creative scorer that can set his man up. I think he's got the chance to be great, but you're going to have to wait a little while on Darko Milicic because it's going to take him some time to mature. He's got to get stronger. He's sometimes easily pushed off the lane, and you're not always sure if he's going to be willing to play inside. I think he will in, in the future as well. The pick is in, and that is the beauty of it for Darko. He does not have to come in and do what LeBron James has to do and carry a team and carry a franchise. He comes to a team that got to the Eastern Conference Finals, won 50 games, and as we've mentioned, also has a Hall of Fame coach coming in, Larry Brown. Well, I'll tell you what, he, he may be thin and he may not be strong, but you got Ben Wallace behind you. So you got that going for you. I mean, no one's going to kick sand in your face with Big Ben back there. And you got other guys that can score, other guys that can rebound. It's nice to be able to bring along a rookie slow. All right. Let's head up to the podium to find out the uh, second overall pick. It's, uh, you go back to James Worthy when he was selected by the Lakers in 82. Len Bias, the tragic story of Len Bias. The Celts had the number two pick then. Uh, there are a very few times in NBA history, just a half dozen, where a team that's won 50 games has picked this high in the draft. With the second pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Detroit Pistons select Darko Milicic from Serbia and Montenegro. Turned 18 on Friday. The rules of the NBA draft had to change a bit to allow Darko Milicic to be selected. Used to be you had to turn 18 within 45 days of the draft. Now you must turn 18 by the end of the calendar year that the draft is in. Darko Milicic, dad, 6'7", police officer, mom is 6'3". Enjoyed Sacramento on TV. Peja Stojakovic and Vlade Divac back in his home. He watched. Now they will watch Darko Milicic. What will they see about him in the Villas breakdown? Darko Milicic, very highly skilled. He can shoot it, he can pass it. A very good rebounder and an excellent handler. He's fundamentally sound and he's got terrific hands. Just 18 years old and he's got all the elements that you want in a great player because he's a creative scorer on the offensive end. He can set his man up and make a move and with that seven foot five inch wingspan, he can shoot over the top of people. He's got very good footwork. He still needs to get stronger and get the strength to hold position down low, but with his back to the basket he can make credible post moves and with those great hands look how he sets his man up uses a jab step that's extraordinary for a guy seven feet tall with the such long arms but with that strength to hold position i think a key watch when he tries to get position here inside the paint he winds up getting pushed all the way out to the corner as he gets stronger and matures as a basketball player he will be able to hold that position and he'll be much more likely to score with his back to the basket
basket. Darko Milicic, a chance to be great. You can't say that about that many big guys. This guy has got skills. The highest drafted European in NBA history, Darko Milicic, taken by the Detroit Pistons, and he's standing by on the Sprite set with Michelle Tafoy. All right, Mike, and Darko deciding to do this interview one of the first times he's doing it without an interpreter, so we welcome that. Darko, what do you know about Detroit? I've been in Detroit uh, two times. It's nice for me, nice area. I've never been downtown, but I like first, I like people in, the, in Detroit, in club. You are a very outspoken guy. NBA fans are going to learn a lot about you. What are they going to learn first? What they must learn first. What, what are fans going to learn about you first? Uh, I don't know. I can I can't offer that. Uh, he must saw me first. Uh, I think he's never saw me. Like how, that's what is, that, what is my best uh, in, in court. You and your family survived war. You were 10 years old when your father went off to war. How do you think that affected you as a player? I, I am strong. I'm, I just can be stronger. And, you know, that's, I can, I know. Well, Detroit is counting on that strength. Here's the road jersey, Darko. Congratulations, Mike. When he was just 10 years old, his mom sold the family car to buy a cow to support them through that war. I think Darko can probably buy her the whole farm now. Yep, left uh, at 14 to play basketball. His dad was off of the war. Quite a story coming true here tonight. Standing on the stage, by the way, was Pedro Savovich of the Denver Nuggets, who was going to help translate in case Darko needed it. He did not. Pedro's team, the Nuggets, are on the clock. But while we have a second, Jim Gray in Cleveland with their head coach, Paul Simons. Mike, thank you. The euphoric feelings continue here. Paul, congratulations to you. Is it possible on a night like this to talk about real expectations and what are they for LeBron? Not really. I think that uh, we just want him to improve uh, every time out. Uh, by his own admission, he talks about winning. He talks about making the team better. If that's his mindset, he can only get better. He can only be as good as he's going to be. What do you do about all the people surrounding him? Of course, he has an agent. He's close to his mother. He's got teammates. He's got quite an entourage for an 18-year-old. How do you make that go from an entourage to one guy now being a member of your team? Well, it's all according to what he does on the floor. That's what I'm mainly concerned with. We're going to have to try to protect him as much as possible from media scrutiny and that kind of thing. But if he does well on the court, everything else falls into place. You've been in basketball for 34 years. Have you ever seen anything quite like what is surrounding LeBron and what's going on? regarding his draft pick and him coming into this league? Jim, I have not. I'm just happy to be a part of it. <laughs> All right, Paul, congratulations to you. We've got another pick. Denver's pick is up. Let's go to Mike Tirico. Okay, Jim, thank you. Like the Cleveland Cavaliers, a team that Paul Silas takes over. The Denver Nuggets also won just 17 games this year. They end up three in the lottery. Most years it would be kind of a consolation prize, but probably not this year. Back up to the podium and Commissioner David Stern. With the third pick in the 2003 NBA Draft, the Denver Nuggets select Carmelo Anthony from Syracuse University. The hug for his mom, Mary, who uh raised four children on a housekeeper's wage from the tough streets of Baltimore, learned basketball at age seven on a crate, eight feet up, one year in college, and led Syracuse to 30 wins in its first ever national championship. Stu Scott is with Carmelo's mom, Mary. Mike, I'm here with Mary. Got to be a very emotional moment. What's running through your mind right now? Is this a dream for you? Yes. At what point did you know that your son was not just a special person, but a special basketball player? It's okay. It is okay. Tears of joy, I'm sure. We'll come back and talk to you later. Hopefully, Mike, let's go back to you, because uh, this moment 
So let her have it to herself. It is so much a part of the story. Let's bring in our friend, Mr. Vital. Dick, take us through Carmelo Anthony, how you think he's going to make the adjustment to the NBA. Mike, it was so beautiful to see the tears of joy and happiness. Tremendous love there with his mom. The one thing that this youngster possesses is the unbelievable charisma, that great smile. Plays the game with great feeling. A guy that can beat you so many ways, inside, outside. He's going to provide offensive firepower to Denver. Denver averaged 84 points a game last year, Mike. This kid's going to provide scoring in day one. You know, you talk about Milicic, and we talk about upside for Darko, and certainly look Looks like he has a great upside and great potential. Carmelo Anthony is not about upside. He is a guy that is ready to contribute. He played 36 minutes a game under pressure situations, responded under pressure, consistently performed at the highest level on the NCAA level. You know, we talk about a lot of these players are going to learn on-the-job training in the NBA, and that's sad in a way where Carmelo had his on-the-job training at Syracuse and was absolutely super. I think a great choice, Mike. I really believe that Detroit may regret not making the call for Mr. Anthony. A great offensive player in college. Denver was last in the league in points, field goal percentage, three-point percentage, free throw percentage. Carmelo Anthony on the spread set with Michelle Tafoy. Mike, thanks very much, Carmelo. You've got the house behind you. Your mom was speechless, overcome with emotion. Can you tell us what this moment means to you and your family? Uh, this moment, it, it just means a lot to me right now. I knew when my mom first came in that she was real tense. I asked her, did she want some water? But she said, no. Nah. Well, I knew that, that she was going to get really emotional early on. Indeed she did. You have gone on the record, Mello, as saying that you're the best player in this draft. What do you know about your game that maybe Cleveland and Detroit didn't? Well, I'm an I'm a all-around player. I think I can pretty much do everything that from the one position all the way down to the power forward position. I, I ain't going to say I'm ready to play a center yet, but yeah, I'm, 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 I can do what I can do. Jim Beheim has said that you are the most fun player he's ever coached. What do you think he meant by that? I'm just excited. I bring a lot to the, I bring a lot to the court. Um, basketball is a game of fun. If you ain't having fun, then there ain't no need for you to be playing. Have fun in Denver, Mello. Thanks. Mike, let's send it back to you. It's part of their new look, the hat, and we go via the EA Sports video conferencing to the Nuggets headquarters, and Kiki Vandeway, their general manager, will join us. Kiki, to take Carmelo Anthony at this pick was a no-brainer for a lot of guys. Other years, you would have been not in as good position at number three. Did you have any doubts about Carmelo before you worked him out a couple of weeks ago? There was no real doubt. I think this draft is very unique because I think you had three players that in any other draft could have been a number one pick. So we're just overjoyed to have Carmelo. It was just, you know, tremendous to see his mom and the, and the love in that family. And we hope we can show him the same type of love here in Denver. Kiki, you're rebuilding a franchise there, have a lot of salary cap room. We'll discuss that later. Is Carmelo the type of player on and off the floor that you can build a successful franchise around? Well, I've gone on record saying that uh, character is very important to me, and, and Carmelo certainly has that in abundance. He's a tremendous young man besides being a great basketball player, and I think he's going to be a great addition to the NBA community and our community here in Denver. Kiki, thank you very much. We'll talk to you later on. Thank you. Kiki Vandeway, general manager of the Denver Nuggets. Toronto's in the fourth spot. This is where the known stops, the unknown begins. The hot spot of the draft, how will it all spin? Let's see what the Raptors are going to do. They have a new head coach, remember, in Kevin O'Neill, former Detroit assistant. Here's the commissioner. With the fourth pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Toronto Raptors select Chris Bosch from Georgia Tech University. It was seven years ago in the fourth spot that a Georgia Tech player was drafted. Stephon Marbury by Milwaukee. Here, Chris Bosch is taken by the Toronto Raptors. Another player like Carmelo Anthony, just a pick before, who spent one year in college and then turned pro, Jay. Where is he going to play? Is he going to play out on the perimeter? Is he going to be more of a three-man? Or will he play inside? He's not the kind of guy that has a lot of size right now as far as bulk. He needs to put on some weight. 
But let's take a look at exactly what this kid can do. He's 6'11 and a half, a left-handed shot blocker that can really change ends. He runs the floor extraordinarily well, and he's got terrific hands. He's very productive. He can fill up a stat sheet in a lot of different categories. But the question I have about him, will he gain the weight and will he make the commitment to playing inside? He's a set shooting big man. He can step away from the basket and knock down shots as a trailer. Doesn't really put the ball on the floor, but he can really run. An outstanding athlete, great hands. I think he's got the most potential of any other player in the draft outside of the top three. But with those rounded shoulders, I just question whether he can put on a lot of weight. It's a question in my mind as to whether he's got the toughness in order to play inside. That's a question he's going to have to answer. Where do you play him out on the floor? We'll talk about his Toronto fit in a minute. Here he is on the Sprite set with Michelle again. All right, with Chris Bosch, fourth pick to Toronto. You know, one season at Georgia Tech, and then your mom sat you down and said, write down all the pros and cons of leaving school early for the NBA. What was the biggest deciding factor? Just the biggest deciding factor, you know, uh, I knew I had the chance to make it to the NBA at a high level, at a high pick, actually. And, you know, it, it just wasn't a reason, you know, to come back to college and risk the chance of getting hurt. I mean, Georgia Tech is a great place, great place. And I know you'll miss it. Critics have said, and you're hearing it, does he have the NBA body? Can he commit to putting on the weight? How are you going to answer the critics? Well, I mean, NBA body, if you can play, you can play. That's why we're all here. So, I mean, that comes with time, and I'm not worried about that. We'll be watching, Chris. Congratulations. You. Mike, back to you. Thanks, Michelle. Guys, how does he fit with the Raptors? Well, for me, I think the big thing is his development is really going to be dependent upon the guard play in Toronto. Those guys are going to have to really take him under their wing and really allow him to become a much more productive basketball player in a hurry. They want to win now. I think he helps him more immediately on the defensive end, blocking shots, gobbling up rebounds, offensively just get the ball to Vince Carter and get out of the way. And keep Vince healthy yes. in the line. Toronto, by the way, was 20th in block shots in the NBA this year. Miami's on the clock. They pick fifth. The draft continues from New York as maybe the Miami Heat are thinking about moving that pick. We'll hear the conversation about how Pat Riley tries to rebuild that team on the run that won just 25 games in 2003. Miami next. We welcome you back to the theater at Madison Square Garden. Our coverage of the 2003 NBA Draft here on ESPN. You can follow what's happened if you're just joining us as you watch the words on our side and underneath our picture here. The Miami Heat are on the clock, a 25-win team. Pat Riley tries to rebuild this team on the run so he can leave it in a little bit better shape than it is right now. Here's the commissioner with the selection. With the fifth pick in the 2003 NBA Draft, the Miami Heat select Dwayne Wade from Marquette University. Tom, we were there and watched Dwayne Wade single-handedly take Marquette for the first time in 26 years back to the Final Four when they beat Kentucky in the regional final in Minneapolis. This guy's a flat player. I mean, you, you look at the top three, and I think he's right at that next level. There's really not a lot he can't do. They questioned his shooting. I think he shoots fine from mid-range. He's a physical two-guard. He can get out and defend long arms, and he's not afraid to take it to the hole. He can draw contact and finish. I love this guy. I think he could be a multiple all-star in a couple years. A hug there from his college coach, Tom Crean, who they were so close. And there you see his uh, wife. What a happy moment for them as well. Greg, Dwayne Wade in the NBA. Can he make it jump smoothly? Oh, he, he won't have a problem making a jump. The problem is, if you're Miami, where are you going to play him with Eddie Jones when you need his point guard? That's my only concern there. You know, that could be a big problem for them if they can't make a move. Here is Stu Scott with Dwayne Wade's wife, Siobhan. Stu. Hugs and kisses all around Savon in a draft where the top three picks are teenagers. Now you got a guy who's got a wife and a kid. <laughs> How has being a father helped Dwayne become a better basketball player? I think it has motivated him so much. Uh, he knows he has to set an example for him, and, it, and it's really pushing him to work hard. Well, he said before that you were the one who was nervous and had to be calmed down. We know how husbands do. We know sometimes they don't tell the whole truth. Mike, let's go back to you. Thank you, Stu. High school sweethearts who got married. Jay, talk about Dwayne Wade leaving after his junior year, but certainly ready to make the move. Dwayne Wade is a slasher. He's a big guard in the mold of, of I think, a guy like Steve Francis or going way back, Sidney Moncrief. He's got a great first step, and he's always around the ball. He has long arms, a great wingspan, and he really can fill up a stat sheet in a lot of 
different categories. He gets deflections, steals. He can block shots. He can lock you down defensively. And he's also got the ability to take the ball to the basket. The question marks are his shooting range. He is not a great shooter. He's been working on that shot, but he can get to the basket. And that's the thing that impresses me most. As a big guard, he really is productive, and he's an accomplished basketball player. What I like best about him, Mike, is he's a hard worker. He's got a great work ethic, and he's a terrific teammate. I like this pick. I think Pat Riley is sending a message that even though he may not fit in, may not be able to make a, be a point guard with Karan Butler and Eddie Jones, he's going to go to battle with those guys because Dwayne Wade is a high-character guy that will fit in with that team. Since they started charting round by round, highest Marquette pick ever taken. Standing by on the Sprite set with Michelle Tafoy. All right, Mike, thanks. Dwayne, all through the week, the talk was you could go anywhere from four down toward the bottom part of the first round. What was your reaction when you were picked fifth by Miami? Uh, it's a dream come true. I'm blessed. I know I am. I uh, just know that hard work pays off, and I really learned that at Marquette. Tom Crean, your coach at Marquette, has said he just constantly wants to get better, and if he continues that work ethic, he can have a long career. What are you going to try to get better at first? Well, you know, I'm the kind of player that you know I need to fine-tune everything in my game, so I'm going to work on everything, the things I was good at and the things I need to get better at. Between all your visits with Zaire and your wife, Savon, who are so emotional, great story. Dwayne, congratulations. Mike, let's send it back to you. Shell, right to the EA Sports video conference as we look at the folks who are headed to South Beach. And we join Pat Riley, the president and head coach of the Miami Heat. Coach, where the folks in New York are glad to see you again, Coach. Where, <laughs> where does Dwayne fit into your team? Hello, everybody. What's that? Where Dwayne does Dwayne about all of that stuff? Where does Dwayne fit into your team? He's a player. Uh, I tell you where he fits in. Uh, he, to me, was probably the most mature uh, player that uh, we worked out and scouted. And not only do I see him as a multiple position player, but I see him as a guy who can defend. Uh, not only can he defend, finally have a defensive player who can score, get to the basket, rebound, deflect. Uh, he's an absolutely complete player who's going to get better. So we are absolutely excited with this pick. So the fact that you have an Eddie Jones with a big contract for five years in the shooting guard spot, you're not worried about that? You're going to make it work with the players that are there? Well, I, I think you'll probably see a lineup of Wade, Jones, and Butler a lot. And uh, I think this is one... Uh, one of the players in the draft, the perimeter player, probably the only perimeter player of his size that I think other than James uh, that could probably play the point guard position. And, and how we plan on playing in the future is to play bigger and longer. Here's a guy that's, uh, you know, he's 6'4", and he's got a, a six, a plus six inch uh, wingspan. So he's real long, he's real athletic, and, and we're planning on using him in that spot. Coach, you pick at 33, we'll let you get back in. Thank you very much. Pat Riley, the head coach and president of the Miami Heat, the Los Angeles Clippers are on the clock. Always intriguing to see what move the Clippers will make, but send it back to Commissioner Stern for pick six. With the sixth pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Los Angeles Clippers select Chris Kamen from Central Michigan University. First time in 13 years that a Central Michigan player has been drafted. It was Thunder Dan Marley in 88, taken by the Phoenix Suns. Chris Kamen, Michigan kid from Wyoming, Michigan. His graduating class was 47. He now will call Los Angeles home. The seven-footer taken by the Clippers. Stu is with his dad, Mr. Scott. Mike, I'm with Leroy Kamen. Now, this is actually interesting because Leroy is very calm. We know Chris has told us that you, and I'm using his words, can get out of control while he's playing up in the stands yelling. Leroy, how are you going to do that when he's in the NBA? I don't know. I'll just have a good time with him. I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little nervous now all of a sudden. <laughs> now, but, you've been known to actually yell at the coach saying, put my kid in. Yes, I You're going to yell at Dennis Johnson? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see how about that one. I don't know. <laughs> now, I mean, Chris wants you to calm down. He's scared you're going to have a heart attack. I mean, can you <sighs> take a breath and relax? Yeah. yeah you know, um, when he does play game and uh, 
I get all pumped up, and sometimes I get so pumped up, I even got, one time I almost passed out. It was really comical, but uh, my daughter kind of got wound up with me a little bit, and she said, settle down, Dad, settle down. <laughs> all right, Leroy, congratulations. Mike, let's go back to you. Dad involved in public works up there in Michigan. Mom, a teacher's aide. Uh, they've raised quite a son. Jay, the Billis breakdown. Well, he's very skilled with both hands. Chris Kamen can shoot with his right hand and his left hand. In fact, when I first saw him play, until he shot a free throw, I didn't see warm-ups. I wasn't sure whether he was right-handed or left-handed the most offensively advanced big man in this draft. He will be able to step in and score right away. He's got clever post moves, terrific footwork. He can shoot a jump hook. He can face up and shoot a jumper. And he can dunk the ball with both hands when he's near the basket. A legit seven foot. He's not a great athlete, but he is very good offensively. The thing I worry about with him, does he have the strength? That's something I think he can add. He's got to get into the weight room, tone up that body. He's got almost 17, 18% body fat, so he's got to work on that. And I really do think he needs to work on his defense. He's not shown a ton of pride on the defensive end, and that's something he has got to change and has got to continue trying to rebound out of his area. But a great prospect, a guy that can play right away for you. All right, on the strike set, Chris Kamen with Michelle again. And Mike, Chris has said all along, you didn't want to be drafted just because you were a seven-footer. What do you think you proved to GMs that got you the sixth pick? Um, you know, I, I feel like I, you know, I'm a solid player on the basket, you know, and I think that's something that the, the Clippers were interested in, and um, I'm, I'm just glad to play for him, you know. Um, Al Miller is a great GM, you know, and so I'm really excited right now. No, no reason not to be, but 10 consecutive losing seasons with the Clippers. Can you help change that? Oh, I think so. I think definitely. You know, it might take some time, but, um, you know, I'm just glad to be here right now, and um, I'm thankful, you know, thank God that I'm here, you know, and my family, everybody supported me, so... All right, congratulations, Mike. He said he was going to keep his 1996 GMC Yukon, but now he doesn't know how to get into California, so I think he can get a new car. I think so. And Tom Tolbert, a quick thought about this pick. Where's Ola Kindy go? Is Ola Kindy gone? Does he stay? Do they want him backing him up? I'm not, I'm not really sure. They have a lot of duplicated positions down there, and if Ola Kindy is going to stay, then I'm not really sure if I understand this one. As a free agent, probably gone. Bulls on the clock. We're back with more of the draft from New York after this. Back with the four draft track, those of you who may just be joining us, LeBron James selected number one by Cleveland, the youngest number one pick in NBA draft history as James is 18 years old. Darko Milicic to Detroit. Yao Ming taken number one last year. This is the second highest international pick, highest European pick in draft history. And Carmelo Anthony, 12 years after Billy Owens, goes to the three spot from Syracuse to Denver. Chicago's on the clock, and here's the Bulls pick at number seven overall. With the seventh pick in the 2003 NBA Draft, the Chicago Bulls select Kirk Heinrich of Kansas University. Some people surprised by the pick, Kirk Heinrich. 22 years old, one of the older players that will be selected here tonight. But this situation perhaps has changed somewhat in the last uh, week or so. It's been about nine days now since Jay Williams was injured in a motorcycle accident. And with his future in question, perhaps Chicago thinking that they needed another point guard, they make the pick here. His teammate Nick Collison waits in the green room, but he's certainly proud, Stu Scott. Mike, Nick Collison and Kirk Heinrich, you guys played more than 60 AAU games before you ever stepped foot on Kansas's uh, campus. What do you know about him that lets you know for sure this guy's going to make it in the NBA? He's a competitor. He's always competed. You know, no matter who we played, he's always uh, came to play and, uh, you know, always puts forth his best effort. And uh, I think he's going to be great for Chicago. Former roommates, Mike, but after a few years living together, they had to part ways. It was like, you know, one of them was Oscar, the other was Felix. What are you going to do? Well, they're going to find each other somewhere in the NBA. We'll find out when their paths will cross it a little bit. Greg Anthony, as an NBA point guard for a dozen years, how will Kirk Heinrich make the transition? Well, I think he is at an advantage going to Chicago because they run a triangle offense where you really don't feature a point guard. So for him, his ability to shoot the basketball, playing with great athletes on that front line, he'll be able to contribute right away and be able to play alongside the likes of a Jamal Crawford. Also, the ability to shoot it very well, Jay. And he shoots it very efficiently. He shoots shot over 
over 50% for his career at Kansas, over 45% from three, over 80% of his free throws. But what I love about Kirk Heinrich, he attacks in transition. He can run all day, and he has graded out as the best defender among these guards outside of Dwayne Wade. I think Dwayne Wade, a more versatile defender that can guard more positions. When he's gone straight up against uh, point guards and two guards, he has graded out very well in all of his workouts, an outstanding defender. Learned the game from his dad, Jim, now a Chicago Bull, staying in the Midwest and on the Sprite set with Michelle Tafoy. Kirk Heinrich found out just when we did, when your name was called, you're going to Chicago. It's a, it's a franchise in the midst of a lot of change, particularly at the point guard situation with the unfortunate happenings with Jason Williams. Your thoughts about going into that franchise and making an immediate impact? I'm just really excited. You know, uh, I, I can't be more happy. It's a dream you know, I've had all my life. I think that I'm going to go in there with the right attitude and make it work out. Some people thought you would have to prove to scouts, to GMs, to coaches that you could create your own shot. How do you think you proved it to them? I think I, think I showed them. You know, I had really good workouts, uh, and just it went well. I went in there trying to impress people, and I'm just thrilled to death to be going to Chicago. Chicago, not too far from Iowa. Your parents will get to see a lot of you. Mike, let's send it back to you. Michelle, we mentioned the point guard story as you look at the Heinrichs, who are so proud of their son, Jay Williams, uh, the point guard from Duke, number two pick here last year. Involved in the motorcycle accident that Jay Billis, uh, you know the Duke family so well, uh, could threaten his entire basketball career and his future. Yeah, Mike, it's a sad story, and, and I've known Jay for a long time. I, I don't know a better kid. He's always made great decisions. He made an unfortunate decision to get on this motorcycle, and, and it was it was tragically ironic that he was just at Duke uh, the day before the accident working out with Johnny Dawkins, the associate head coach and a teammate of mine, and spoke at the camp to a bunch of youngsters and talked to them about being smart because it could all end tomorrow and making good decisions, and maybe it did all end tomorrow. But if anybody can overcome these, these horrible injuries, he sustained to his left side. It's Jay Williams. He's a strong young man. The Bulls officially have said it certainly is not in their plans for next year because of an injury standpoint, and his career is certainly in jeopardy, but you only hope things work out for him. Up the road a couple hours from Chicago, Milwaukee. What will the Bucks do as they select now number eight here in the draft? With the eighth pick, in the 2003 NBA Draft, the Milwaukee Bucks select T.J. Ford from the University of Texas. Some thought he would be a higher pick. Some say he can't shoot it well enough. T.J. Ford taken by another team, perhaps in need of a point guard if Gary Payton moves on. And Gary Payton is a free agent. T.J. Ford's like, I'll ask you the same question about Heinrich. Chance over transition to the NBA at point guard. Well, I think it'll help there because they have so many skilled guys there on the perimeter. He'll have a fa uh, an opportunity to have an impact right away. They got to figure out, they need to figure out an identity. This guy excels in a speed-up game. They had a speed-up game three years ago when they had Ray Allen, Glenn Robinson, and Cassell. They tried to go more defensive-oriented. This team needs to find an identity and figure out which way they want to go. Dick Vitale in Florida, you say nay to the naysayers about T.J. Ford. I'll tell you one thing, Mike. I'm certainly excited for T.J., and I know the people in Milwaukee are going to love him. He had 527 assists in two years. Absolutely a brilliant guy who creates opportunities. He'll have players down here who can finish and finalize. I think a great choice, just like the choice by, by Wade going, for example, to Miami, just like I think in the case of taking Chris Bosh, they took him on potential on uh, number four rather than getting instant help. I thought they could have used T.J. Ford up in Toronto. But the bottom line is, Heinrich's going to be solid in Chicago and this kid because they've really learned how to play and they're ready to contribute. They're not drafted with the idea of sitting on the pine and waiting and waiting and waiting because ultimately a kid like Bosch will be a good player just like Dunleavy will be a good player eventually. But last year he had to learn. I think if I'm up there on top and I need instant help, I want to get help now. Man, you're Kevin O'Neill up in Toronto. You got a two-year deal, man. You can't wait for Chris Bosch for five years to be a player. I don't understand the logic with some of the choices. 
Well, T.J. Ford is selected, Dick, and for those who say the American College game is not as good as it was, four teams made the Final Four. Syracuse, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, Marquette, Kirk Heinrich, Kansas, T.J. Ford, Texas. Each of the Final Four teams have their star guy going in this draft. The Knicks are on the clock. The magic words said in this building. What will their reaction be to New York's pick? Come back and find out. Watch the WNBA All-Star Game, Saturday, July 12th on ABC. T.J. Ford of the Milwaukee Bucks now with Michelle on the Sprite set. Well, Mike, with T.J., as you mentioned, if size and shooting were the big questions, T.J., what do you think sold Milwaukee? Well, I'm just part of a winning program at the University of Texas, and I know that they feel that they're already in the playoffs, and I can just come in and help the team behind San Francisco and if they re-sign Gary Payton. You improved so much between your freshman and sophomore seasons at Texas, the 800 to 1,000 shots a day. What are you planning to do to prove that you can get better as a shooter in this Well, I feel everyone that's in this draft come in with a weakness. I think we all got to work on something to get better. And so I'm just going to prepare myself and hopefully turn out for the best. Congratulations. Mike, back to you. As the next pick comes in, the fans build the excitement here at the theater of Madison Square Garden. It's always such a good moment. We'll just let the crowd tell you what they think after Commissioner Stern gives you the pick. With the ninth pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the New York Knicks select Michael Sweetney from Georgetown University. By and large, sounds like the majority approves. Stuart Scott is with them to sample some of their opinions. Well, Mike, in the name of Frederick Weiss, I'm here with a bunch of Knicks fans. The last time the Knicks picked a center out of Georgetown, it worked pretty well. Will, what do you think about the choice? I think it's a great choice, picking someone from Georgetown, just like Patrick Ewing. You gotta go for it. Now, is there anybody else that you wanted? I would have picked the bigger uh, Lampy from Spain. He's 6'11". But anyone from Georgetown better. All right, Lampy Mike is the heartfelt choice, but you can't go wrong with Georgetown, baby. Back to you, Mike. That's the last we'll see of Stu tonight, I think. Sweetney will play the four here in the NBA at 6'8". Here's a guy who worked his body into shape, Jay, to become a horse, a guy Georgetown could ride all season long. Yeah, and he's very productive, Mike. Mike Sweetney, I think, may be undersized, but he's a lot like Elton Brand. I'm not sure he's as tenacious as Elton Brand, but he's extraordinarily productive inside. He's got really long arms over a seven-foot wingspan. He can block some shots. He's a very good offensive rebounder, as we talked about. But what I really like about him, he gets to the free throw line. And I think that translates to the pro level. You get to the free throw line at a high rate in college, I think you're going to get there at the pro level as well. I do question his explosiveness. Can he explode up and score over people near the basket in the NBA? He'll have to answer that question in the toughest market in the league. Now he answers questions from Michelle over on the Sprite side. Well, Mike, he talked to Patrick Ewing just a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, the Georgetown connection. What did Patrick tell you? What was the best piece of advice he gave you? Basically, he just told me just to stay focused, keep working hard, and all my dreams will come true soon. You know, it's tough making the leap into the NBA no matter who you are. You're here in New York City. You're hearing it from these people already. The attention is unbelievable. How prepared are you to handle it? I'm very prepared. I'm just ready to go out here and work hard, hope we make the Knicks better, and do whatever it takes to help the team win. They need help inside. You've worked very hard to stay in shape. How tough is it to continue to keep yourself in shape? You were 320 when you came into Georgetown, got down to 260. Yeah, you know, Coach Ronnie Thompson helped me out a lot, you know, changed my diet plan, gave me a good workout. You know, things went well, and I dropped the weight quick. Congratulations, Mike. Good luck to you in New York. Let's Thanks. send it back to Tariko. They ran the uh, three-mile loop there at Georgetown together for a couple of years to get him back in shape. Good help for the Knicks with a rebound. Do you think they need it? Knicks were last in the NBA rebounding this past year. David Aldridge has some news for us. David. Well, Mike, you know, the, the Wizards are coming up with a 10th pick. And up until a couple of hours ago, Washington and Miami were discussing a deal. Would have sent Kwame Brown to Miami. And it was a three-way potential deal involving Seattle as well, where Miami would have wound up with two picks. 
Miami, uh, Seattle would have gotten Kwame Brown, Washington would have gotten the fifth pick. But Eddie Jordan, the new head coach of the Wizards, said he did not want to trade Kwame Brown. He wants to look at Kwame Brown, give him an opportunity to see what he, show what he can do before they make any final decisions on him. And the point is good, David, because you have to remember so many of the high school players have matured after their first couple of years in the league. Amari Stoudemire has been the anomaly of that group. Here is Washington selection at number 10. Overall, round out the top 17, 10 of the 2003 draft. With the 10th pick in the 2003 NBA Draft, the Washington Wizards select Jarvis Hayes from the University of Georgia. It's been 15 years since a player out of Georgia was taken this high. Willie Anderson back in 88, but Jarvis Hayes makes it into the top 10. Dick Vitale, a young man so close to his twin brother Jonas tonight, makes the uh, separation step into the NBA. You know, Mike, I had a chance to do one of his big games against Florida when he hit a 12-foot shot at the end of the game to upset the Gators. He's a kid that likes the ball at the end. He's a kid that utilizes the screen really well. He defends well, and he's got great size. At 6'7", he's got that tremendous size to be a two-guard and the range to shoot it. He is absolutely a great choice. He was one of my players that I really like. You know, David Aldridge just mentioned, for example, Kwame Brown. He's an example of a lot of young kids where you don't understand a lot about them in terms of work ethic once they get a lot of cash. Bottom line is you get some mature players like guys like Hayes and like Heinrich. They're ready to make the adjustment and handle that situation. I think Hayes is an outstanding choice for the Wizards. Some of the choices earlier, I'm not all sold on like some of my uh, compadres are sitting in the studio. Jonas Hayes, we mentioned, is Jarvis's twin brother. They were at Western Carolina together, transferred to Georgia together. Then now they make the separation step. But Stewart is there with the family, Mom Yvonne, and talking with Jonas as well. Stu. Jonas, you guys were together at Western Carolina, as Mike just said. You went to Georgia together. This would be the first time that you are not going to be with them. How are you all going to deal with that? Oh, man, we've been talking about it for a while. So it's not, not as, didn't come as a surprise. But, you know, you know we got to pick up the pieces and move on. All right, now. According to you, you have only switched places once, according to you. Any chance you're going to shave your head and maybe just switch places with your brother once? Not a chance. Not a chance. All right, who's better looking? Oh, definitely me. <laughs> All right, Michelle Tafoya may have somebody who disagrees with that. Michelle? I don't know. You, watching your family so emotional. Now, you, they've been following you through a roller coaster as you headed into this draft. You've been having a lot of last-minute workouts. What happened at the Washington workout that you think impressed the Wizards? I think the way I shot the ball. You know, I came in and competed, worked hard, and showed, showed them a couple things. You have the opportunity to show them a lot of things. They haven't been to the playoffs. They've been there, missed it 15 of the last 16 years. New coach Eddie Jordan. Right. How quickly do you think you can make an impact on this team? I think I can make an impact right away. You know, um, I, I bring energy, athleticism, and, and just, just energy, I guess. A lot of people call you the dark horse. We're going to wait and watch with the Washington Wizards. Back to you, Mike. Michelle, thank you. The prior pick was the Knicks taking Mike Sweetney. Let's lock up with the EA Sports video conference. Join the general manager of the Knicks, Scott Layden. Scott, the good news was the pick was well received here by all of your New York neighbors and friends. Did you look at all into moving up in this draft, and how serious did that come? Well, Mike, we uh, looked at every option, moving up, possibly moving back. But we felt that Mike Sweetney would be uh, a great pick at number nine. And you know he's going to look good in the Nick uniform. We have had unbelievable success with Georgetown players. And we're excited to have him in New York. You have another one on your roster in Othella Harrington. There was a lot of talk about a potential Latrell Sprewell trade. Did you come close to pulling the trigger on that in the last 48 hours? Well, th there's always a lot of conversation this time of year, but right now we're happy with our team. We are uh, very excited about our draft pick, and, and now we're focused on number 30 and 39 to try and improve the team more. Yeah, you, it's a deep draft. You may get guys down there. Thank you. We appreciate it. Scott, Scott Layden, President and General Manager of the Knicks. Golden State Warriors, one of the turnaround teams in the league, on the clock, and let's check in with the commissioner, their pick at number 11. With the 11th pick, in the 2003 NBA Draft, the Golden, War Golden State Warriors select 
Michael Petrus from France. This may be the second of the international players taken. Jay, tell us about this uh, first international selection by the Warriors in the first round over their history. Well, Michael Petrus is a, a freak athlete. He, he's an incredibly explosive player that can really get up and down the floor. He is very strong. He's got a similar game to Desmond Mason. He's just as athletic, but not quite as polished. He's got long arms, and he's really a tough kid. He will guard people with a tough, nasty streak, and he looks to lock you up. Because of his defensive ability, that makes him somebody you would really covet in this draft. And that's rare, Tom, because we're talking about defensive ability and an international player. Yeah, well, you got it with the Mono Ginobili this year. It was the one guy that came in, and he was like a defensive stopper. Most of the guys don't play very good defense, but you got Richardson, you got Jamison, you got Dunleavy. Who knows if Arenas is staying? You don't have a point guard. You know, I'd love to say, hey, this is great. I, I don't know what the hell you're doing. I mean, you, you're duplicating positions right now, and I don't know why you duplicate another position where you have Jason Richardson, one of your better players. And he doesn't shoot it. That's the thing. He might make a shot, but he's going to get the shot clock on the next one. He's got to refine that shot. But, but I think he'll be fine. He's an athlete. He's explosive. And I think they're betting on being able to resign Gilbert Arenas. That's a guy they put a lot of weight on. They expect him back. He's got a working relationship with Eric Musselman. Well, he better I be think back. I think he'll be fine. And they got athletes. They got enough of those. Headline was Jay said he defeated. Defense. Golden State needs some more players to defend. Their open style led to a lot of easy transition baskets for the opposition this year. We'll continue with more of the 2003 draft where pick 12, it belongs to Seattle, which has two this round. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Chris Bosh. I'm Dwayne Wade. I'm Dr. Komiritu. And you're watching NBA Draft. Oh, all right, so I can kind of... <laughs> so what's the line again? <laughs> and you're watching the NBA Draft on ESPN. One hour into the draft, here is the Ford Draft Track. Those of you might just be joining us at the top, no surprises. Dwayne Wade taking number five by Miami. He continues to make marks on the Marquette history book. Chris came in from Central Michigan, goes six to the Clippers. Are they filling a need? Nicola Wakandi is no longer there. Michael, the center, who was the number one overall pick a few years ago. And from the final four of 2003, four of the first eight picks each team represented Pretty interesting as you look back and take a big picture look at college basketball 2003. Maybe college basketball is stronger than we give credit for sometimes. The Seattle Supersonics are on the clock. They have picked 12 and 14 here in this draft. Let's hear their first one and we'll go check in with Commissioner David Stern at number 12 overall. With the 12th pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Seattle Sonics select Nick Collison from Kansas University. Much like fellow Iowan Kirk Heinrich, his dad, a high school coach who taught him the game, they learned both dads from the same gentleman in Iowa, and they go here in the draft at number 12 and 7, respectively. Nick Vitale, there is no player that you enjoyed more watching than Nick Collison this past year. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Mike. Just look at these numbers. 214 and 30 in high school and college. He's a gamer. He's a winner. I think the Knicks are going to certainly regret not taking him up there over Sweetney. This kid is an absolute gamer. Makes shots, plays on the defensive end, is unbelievable on the glass, rebounds, was a double-double guy last year. Just a flat-out winner. Again, four years, fundamentally solid. Roy Williams, great teacher. Think about the National and the champs this year. You think about Tim Duncan, you think about David Robinson. Four years, fundamentally solid. And that's what these two guys bring to the table, Heinrich and Collison. Fundamentally solid winners and never will give you a problem off the court either. And I agree with Tom Tobin. Tom, I love your comments about Golden State. Why Pietras there? You look at that roster. They don't need another athlete with those guys. Keep telling it, Tom, like it is. <laughs> Bald guys got to sit together. Hey, is that the kinship? <laughs> exactly. If it wasn't the uh, vowel at the end of the last name, it has to be the lack of hair. Michelle over on the Sprite set with Nick. Nick Collison had a goal to be a lottery pick heading to Seattle. When did you get the sense that this was going to be where you were going, Nick? Well, you know, once New York took Sweetney, I felt like, um, you know, this would probably be where I'd end up. And uh, they told me all along that if I was there, you know, they'd pick me, and it's a great place. This is where I wanted to be. You have said that 
power forwards in the NBA are, quote, monsters. How are you going to prepare to take on those monsters? Uh, just get in that weight room, uh, try to get as strong as possible, and, and uh, learn every trick in the book to try to defend those guys. Good night for you and Kirk Heinrich. Congratulations. Mike, back to Thanks you. Well, they need bigs in Seattle, and they get one there. Greg, your thoughts on Nick Collins? Well, he's a polished player. He's mature. I think he's going to have a huge impact there. They definitely needed help at that position, and then they can address their need of point guard with their second selection in this first round. With everything going so fast, let's take a big picture. Look, Jay, anybody slide so far in this draft in your mind? Matt Jay Lampy's uh, slid. I, I had him rated 14th in this draft, so it, it hadn't been a surprise to me, but he was rated as high as 5th by a lot of others. Luke Ridenour slipped down a little bit. Uh, I think Reese Gaines is probably going to be the next pick to Memphis because he's a big guard. Jerry West likes big guards that can guard people, and he can defend multiple positions. We will see what Jerry West and the Memphis Grizzlies do when we continue with the 2003 draft from New York and around the NBA. Welcome back to New York City, where it was 96 degrees today in Central Park. The Memphis Grizzlies are now on the clock with the final lottery selection, the 13th overall pick just to beat at Memphis's 2002-2003. Certainly the huge turnaround after the 0-8 start once Hubie Brown came in. You see their starters, many young, talented players there, and 28 wins the most in franchise history, but with Hubie as the head coach and Jerry West running the show as the president of basketball operations, it's a franchise that is being reworked and turned very, very significantly each year. And this is the 13th overall selection in the draft. We'll see that young roster with one more addition. Up to the commissioner for the Grizzlies pick. With the 13th pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Memphis Grizzlies select Marcus Banks from UNLV. Greg Anthony, you grew up in Las Vegas and played at UNLV. Marcus Banks has done the same thing, and I've been around you enough to know you are passionate about that, even despite the similarities in the path that both of you guys take to the NBA. Yeah, but the one thing about this guy, his size and athleticism really separates him from a lot of the other point guards. This guy is explosive. He attacks the basket. And the, his best attribute is he defends the basketball as well as anybody. You know, this is a guy that a lot of people haven't seen, but he's definitely going to turn heads down in Memphis. Do you think he's the best point guard coming into the NBA this year? I think he's the most complete right now. I think he could have the biggest impact. I don't know what their plans are with him in terms of Jason Williams, but you watch next season, this guy will have a major impact. He's a scoring point guard. I don't know that he's got a point guard's mentality to share the ball, though. That's something he's really going to have to work on. But he can guard. He's really strong, a lockdown defender. Over the years, this has been a great spot in the NBA draft. 13 has been lucky for many teams, of course, through a trade. Richard Jefferson selected by Houston, but starring in New Jersey. It's interesting. When they have Banks and Jason Williams. Jason Williams as good a point yeah. guard in terms of entertainment and excitement out there in the league who improved under Hubie Brown at the end of last year. And he matured, too. Yeah. I mean, you look at his assist-to-turnover ratio, it was as good as it's ever been in the NBA. I mean, his shooting percentage is still down. I don't think Jason Williams is ever going to be better than a 41, 42% shooter. Tops. But I thought he played well last year, got the team in the offense, and wasn't as wild and crazy as he was early on. But he can't guard anybody. He, he, he can't guard. And Hubie Brown is going to make you guard in the NBA. Mindset. Seattle's back on the clock. We'll continue with more of our draft coverage in a little bit from New York. Earlier, Seattle took Collison, part of the Kansas duo. I am ready. ESPN's exclusive coverage of the 2003 NBA Draft is brought to you by Miller Lite. Tell it over a great-tasting, less-filling Miller Lite. It's Miller time. New Odor Eaters Plus, the only arch-supporting insole that protects against odor and wetness. And Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Back in New York, the 2003 NBA Draft continues here on ESPN. Five minutes between picks in round one, two minutes between picks in round two. We mentioned Seattle had the 12th overall pick. They now slide into the 14th spot. Seattle has been as active taking international players as any team over the last decade. What are they going to do here at 14? Back up to Commissioner David Stern for this pick. 
With the 14th pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Seattle Sonics select Luke Ridnour from the University of Oregon. Tom, this is a guy who fits a need after the Gary Payton trade left a void with Brent Barry essentially playing point. Well, they filled two needs. They got a big guy and now a point guard with Luke Ridnour. And I, I know his strength isn't there, but this guy can flat play basketball. I mean, he is exciting to watch. He's a guy that can run the pick and roll. He's a guy that loves to get on the open court and push it. And I think with the guys they have up there, him, Brent Barry, Ray Allen, they're going to want to get up the court and they call us things to run as well. I mean, you watch next year. This guy can do some things that are going to absolutely amaze you. You're going to want to watch Sports Center nights and I got to see what this guy did. Nice cross promotion there, Tom. <laughs> what is it about Oregon and Seattle point guards? Think about it. Oregon State for Gary Payton, Brent Barry, now Oregon, Luke Rudinaro, and bringing Dick Vitale. 167 pounds, Dick. Doesn't sound like NBA weight. Do you think he can handle it? Hey, Mike, I'll tell you one thing. I just agreed with Tobin a minute ago. Forget about it. I agree with Billis about the strength of that body. I'll tell you one thing. You know, he's a good player, but I would have went with Reese Gaines. I can't believe he's still up on a board. 6'6", 38% shooter from the trifecta. Great size. He played in the system with Patino. I would have went Gaines, and Gaines and Collison would have been a nice combination. I don't know, Tobin. I'm now getting off your bandwagon, man. I'm going for Billis now That's in good. terms of that strength. Here's the, here's the good news. Greg Anthony will be next, and Dick will have everybody covered here as the night goes on. Okay. Well, they took Rittenauer for his offense. He runs great pick and roll, and he's a, tr a great passer. The problem is he can't guard the chair I'm sitting in, and he couldn't bench 185 pounds one time, so he's going to have to improve. Hey, it's true. It's in New York. Let me, let me ask you. I gotta, I gotta, let me throw this in there. Why, Mr. Vitale, is size not a problem with T.J. Ford? And now all of a sudden it's a big problem with Luke Ridden now. I mean, you can't have it both no, ways. T.J. Ford's a much better player. I don't want to compare him, but I mean... T.J. Ford's a much better player. If you can play, you can play, right? Well, but you also talk about if running the pick play, and roll. Play. Who's he going to run the pick and roll with Ridden in Seattle? Hour. Ridden Hour can shoot it. That, that's where he has an advantage over Ford. Dick, would you like to respond? <laughs> Apparently hey, not. I want to respond to that. <laughs> Let me respond Go to ahead. that, Mike. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dick. Let me respond. We're talking superb quickness and great athletic ability. Tell Mr. Tobert to check out the athletic ability of T.J. Ford. And by the way, Mr. Anthony, I don't blame you sticking with those running rebels because you're right about Banks. Banks is physical, tough. He can defend just like you. He didn't have a shot, though, from the perimeter. <laughs> This draft was going nice and smooth, and you guys are fine. But you know that he snuck in the lottery. That's just like Just like the other guy without a jumper. <laughs> Let's move to the next team, because Orlando is next, and when you talk about Reese Gaines being out there, maybe there is the ideal fit, because the Orlando Magic have been to the playoffs. They are a team that has one of the premier centerpieces in Tracy McGrady. Yet, over the years, they brought in Jacques Vaughn, and it did not work out as well as they had hoped. Darrell Armstrong has been just a terrific leader, guts, heart, and soul guy. But at the end of his career, they need to bring in a point guard for Doc Rivers. Reese Gaines would be a fit here, guys. Well, Darryl, Darryl Armstrong, his, his warranty's about up. I mean, he has laid it all on the floor every single time he plays out there. But I think Reese Gaines would be a nice pick to go with Gearcheck, Gooden, and McGrady. They've got the parts. They made the playoffs and almost knocked out the one seed Detroit in the opening round. Let's see what Orlando does at 15. With the 15th pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Reese Gaines from the University of Louisville. Well, you want to talk about going with a tall backcourt, you now have 6'6 six, six and 6'8. Six, Reese Gaines, Tracy McGrady, Dick. When Rick Pitino's Louisville team won 17 games in a row, a lot of the heart and soul and defensive guts and guile came from this guy, Reese Gaines. You're exactly right, Mike. This kid was very versatile. He's a combination guard. He can play the big guard slot as well as the point guard position. He played in a pressure situation where they utilize full court pressure down there at Louisville. He was coached by Patino, who obviously is one of the great teachers in the game and motivators. So he's learned a lot about the NBA game. I think he's a superb choice. I knew today, in talking to some insiders in Orlando, they had three guys up there. They had Banks, they had Ridden and they had games. 
and they're really happy to have gains, no doubt about it. I mean, we talk about a kid that really can shoot the three as well. Jay Billis, there was some talk when Rick Pitino came I'll tell you in. One thing. Is he in he, two? He's got great change of direction. He can hang. He's got great vision. What makes him special is size. He can go to the basket. He can pass the basketball. He's got great vision because of that size. Look at a great look, creating the opportunity. He made like Anthony there on a penetration move. And we see him cutting without the basketball, a lost art in the game, learning to move without the ball. A great choice by the Orlando Magic. Doc Rivers is one of my favorite coaches, and I'm going to tell you something. This kid will help that combination they have because right now it's everybody taking a picture of Tracy McGrady and everybody watching. I think they're going to get some other people involved. There was some talk, is he a two, is he a one, is he a two? He really settled in under Rick Pitino and give you the versatility that this Orlando team can use to get away from standing around and watching Tracy McGrady. Over at the Sprite set with Michelle Tafoy. Oh, Reese, how often in your life have you dreamt about being in the backcourt with a player the likes of Tracy McGrady? Man, it's just a great feeling to uh, play along with one of the best players in the NBA. and uh, I'm just thankful Orlando gave me a chance. They give you a chance to join a young team that got some playoff seasoning last year. Yeah. How do you see yourself fitting in? You've had some stretches at shooting guard and at the point guard. Um, I'm just going to do whatever Coach Rivers wants me to do. I think um, I, can, I can penetrate, play good defense. Whatever they want me to do to help the team, I'm willing to do it. Well, you've been prepared since you were three when your dad Clyde taught you to dribble. He's ready to join the Orlando Magic, Mike. And a great reaction. You see the families that have been so happy. Reese Gaines thrilled. He's going to Orlando. Celtic fans, your team is on the clock. We'll get you Boston. They have a couple of selections coming up. He's up here. 16. Boston on the clock. They've just seen point guards go. What will they do? With the 16th pick in the 2003 NBA Draft, the Boston Celtics select Troy Bell from Boston College. A little bit of a surprise, a move up for Troy Bell that some folks as early as last week had in the second round, a move up to the bottom of the first round, perhaps Minnesota when they pick down at number 26. But Andy Katz, Boston's taking him here at the 16th spot. Yeah, but sources have told me, Mike, that they're going to move this pick. It could be a three-team trade. They actually were waiting to see where Michael Petrus would go before they could act on this trade. So even though Boston fans are probably happy that Troy Bell from Boston College is going there, he doesn't look like he's going to stay there. The only three Boston College players that played for the Celtics, John Bagley, Dana Barros, Jerry Ward back in the 60s. Uh, Troy Bell at 16, though, Jay, is still a surprise at this spot, don't you think? It is a surprise. He's a scoring guard. He's got a knack for getting to the free throw line, although he did get bailed out at times in college. He's got pull-up ability, and he's quick off the dribble. I was really surprised in how athletic he tested out in Chicago. He showed a 41-inch vertical leap, but he's got very good balance and strength, so a good prospect. I'm not sure he's going to be a star in the league but he has shown that he can play the point guard position and he's a he's a good player and solid as you watched on ESPN this senior who was undrafted in Minnesota or I'm sorry since say undrafted not recruited in Minnesota by his hometown home state school University of Minnesota joins a lot of guards that have been selected in this draft you see early on the guards selected in the first five picks and now the run that we've had recently including four guards in a row at 13 through 16. Included in that mix was Luke Ridenauer taken 14 by Seattle. EA Sports video conferencing. We bring in Rick's son from Seattle and he joins us, the general manager of the Sonics at 12 and 14. Rick, was there any packaging that you guys tried to do to move higher in this draft? Well, you know what, Mike? We were trying to be as active as we possibly can, looking at the possibility of maybe moving down, looking at the possibility of getting some young veterans that are already in the league. But, uh, you know, as it, as it uh, turned out, we, we were very fortunate, we think. First of all, with, with Nick, we didn't think he was going to get to us. And uh, we need a power forward. We want to get a power forward. And, and Nick's had the, the uh, ability to play some center, although he's a power forward for us with his back to the basket. And he can run the court. And when you're speaking about running, that's where, that's where uh, uh, Luke comes in because uh, Coach uh, McMillan really wants to push the ball up the floor. We got all those shooters on our ball club and by pushing up. So, uh, you know, they're young players, but I, I think there's a chance they'll be able to contribute next year. 
and the two guys rare that you get both quality and need in picks in the middle between 10 and 20 you got both rick thank you very much for joining us rick sun general Hi, manager of the sonics on our ea sports video conference let's keep the video conference line hot here i'll go to orlando right now and check in with the head coach of the orlando magic doc rivers and doc at the 15th spot, you get Reese Gaines. Were you worried there with that run on point guards that got one guy wouldn't be there for you at that 15th spot? Yeah, we had some concerns. Obviously, we were going to take the best player available, and then we felt uh, at the 15th pick, Reese Gaines was. Uh, we wanted a guy, uh, obviously, a big point if we could get him, but we just wanted the best player available. Doc, some people think Reese Gaines might be one of the best combo guards or points. Are you concerned at all that he's not a pure point guard in the NBA, or can he be a pure point in your mind? Well, I don't know if he can or can't. I know he can play, and, and we wanted a player. Uh, we needed a guy who could play one and two because of our depth chart. I think it helps us either way. Uh, I think he's going to play a lot of one for us, but there'll be times that he'll play the two-guard spot also. And we talked when we saw each other at the finals. You need more players and less labels in this league in your mind. That's exactly right, and we have a player. And we had a good conversation over a great dinner also. Doc, thanks. Good seeing you. Thank you. It, it was good. <laughs> Doc Rivers, head coach of the Orlando Magic, a playoff team last year with one of the great stars in the league, Tracy McGrady. Phoenix drafted the Rookie of the Year in the nine spot last year. Let's see what they do at 17 overall as we go back to the commission. With the 17th pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Phoenix Suns select Zarko Shabarkapov. Shabarkapov from Serbia and Montenegro, the second Serbian taken tonight. Darko Milicic taken by Detroit, number two overall, would be the first. Andy Katz, as we mentioned, has been following the international players, and Shabarkapa is a player, Andy, who you had hinted to us over the last 48 hours, might have been moving up in the eyes of some. And a lot of people in the NBA actually thought that Phoenix had made him a promise at 17. Certainly Boston thought that. He's actually good friends with Nana Kristic, who went to New Jersey last season, still overseas. He's 22 years old. He could have entered the draft two years ago. This is his draft eligible year. Unlike a lot of these international players, he wanted to come when he was ready. He went back overseas because he had a family crisis, had some good workouts before with Phoenix, and now he's at number 17 where they thought he would be. Jay Billis, he was on the Yugoslavian championship team from the World Bank basketball championships 12th man on that team didn't play but that doesn't mean he's not a good player no charbakapa is he's skilled he's got ball skills for his size and he's been compared favorably to nicholas kichavili from denver and he's fundamentally sound he's agile he can run the floor he's got to get a lot stronger and i think become a, a far more productive rebounder but at 6'11, 230 pounds and he's got that size and the seven foot one wingspan that makes him an intriguing prospect and at number 17 you got to give a lot of credit to Phoenix for being able to get this pick and they did a tremendous job last year with Amari Stoudemire. They're very good at identifying and developing talent and they've got a good opportunity with the 6'11 kid here in Charbakova. Strong international flavor there as well. Their coach Tim Gergerich, a guy you know very well a former assistant at UNLV. There is somebody who will help mold these guys defensively as well. Yeah, and plus remember this is a team that doesn't need a lot of help. You know, they got a pretty solidified front line. This is an asset that can come in in a couple years, be able to contribute on a very formidable roster. And their assistants also, Mark Ivoroni and Mark D'Antoni, <laughs> both international experience. So a lot of guys, along with Phil Weber, their fourth assistant, really can help a young player grow. Let's go to Michelle over on the Sprite set. And we've got a translator, Roddy Filipovic, along with us. Um, he didn't play a lot of minutes in the 2002 World Championships where they won the gold medal, but... How did you feel about the way you stacked up with the NBA talent? Ja se nadam da sam već od ovog trenutka spreman da 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 igram u Americi, da spreman sam za ovo dve godine i mislim da već od samog početka mogu dosta dobro da pomognem mojoj ekipi budućoj. Think that I'm ready to play and think that I'm ready to help Phoenix Suns. And I was getting ready for this for two years. Uh, I'm ready to go. Prepared for two years. 
now a member of the Phoenix Suns, Zarko. Zarko, congratulations. Back to you, Mike. Charbakapa, get ready to say it out in the Valley of the nice. Sun, Thank America you, West guys. Arena. Only one left in the green room waiting. Maciej Lampe from Poland. Where will he be selected? As Maciej waits, we step aside. Well, for draft track now, for those of you just joining us, here's what's happened in the last 45 minutes or so. Heinrich and Collison, the Kansas connection. Moving on, we have three times now in seven years, Kansas has had two first-round picks. Marcus Banks out of UNLV, for the third UNLV player selected in the last decade. How the mighty have changed six point guards, and we've had a run, including five, or rather four, in a row. New Orleans is set to pick. Let's see what the Hornets do at number 18. With the 18th pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the New Orleans Hornets select David West from Xavier University. That would be Xavier in Ohio, not Xavier in New Orleans, a guy who was very productive and won the National Player of the Year award from the Associated Press. First time that's ever happened in Xavier basketball history. A little bit of a surprise. I thought David West might slip down maybe to number 24 to the LA Lakers, but He's undersized as a power forward, but he's got really long arms, and he reminds me a little bit of a junior Derek Coleman. He's got a knack for scoring around the basket. He's very productive, and he can step away from the basket. Very good at passing out of the post, and he's got a good touch. He's kind of like a, a shorter Drew Gooden, but not quite as good of an athlete. This is not a bad pick for being number 18. I thought the New Orleans might take Brian Cook, but David West will fit in nicely. It's a quality pick and might be a need because of the P.J. Brown situation of free agent with the Hornets. Well, definitely. You don't expect P.J. Brown to be back in New Orleans, and this is a, an a opportunity for them to go in and fulfill a need on that front line. they got a lot of athletes. He fits in that mode. will allow this team to contend if they can somehow bring it all together and stay healthy next season. It is a team that opened eyes. Uh, nobody around the league said changing Paul Paul Silas was a good decision as head coach and a lot of criticism as they brought in Tim Floyd the former Chicago coach who's only won 20.5 percent of his games the worst coaching record in the four major sports for anybody which is 49 wins I think a lot of people are scratching their heads as to where New Orleans is going this is a good move in their offseason an offseason that has not gotten a lot of positive press around the NBA without question you know Tim Floyd coming in has surprised a lot of people I was surprised quite frankly but again, they, they feel like this is a good move for them. He's a local product. He coached at New Orleans. It, hopefully it'll help them sell tickets. They struggled moving that franchise there last year in terms of attendance. But they got to continue to try and put together a solid program, win basketball games, and get to the next level in the playoffs. Well, let me say, too, I mean, if, if Phil Jackson and Red Auerbach had a baby, he couldn't grow up and coach and win with Chicago, the team Tim Floyd had. I mean, that team was horrible. My good friend Bill Walton out here, horrible that team was. <laughs> No one was going to win there. I'm willing to give him a second chance and see how he does in New Orleans. And it kind of worked out nicely for Paul Silas, too, as well. Certainly did. I will not go with the visual on Fred <laughs> Please Phil, don't. but I'll move on to the next team on the clock, which is the Utah Jazz at pick 19. When you talk about changing and ending eras, one certainly ended the all-time assist and steal leader in the history of the NBA, John Stockton, with a very sad farewell as they were eliminated by Sacramento. And the question of Carl Malone, will he go someplace and try to get a ring? Will he stay in Utah? And in either case or situation, will Carl Malone score enough points to surpass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and take over the NBA all-time point lead? As teammates, by a wide margin, by almost 500, nobody played more games together. than you can hear Hot Rod Hundley, the great voice of the Jazz for many years, saying, stocked into Malone, over and over and over. And that's over. And now it's a new era. Should Carl Malone stay in Utah? I think he will stay. Whether or not he should is another question. I think he will stay. I think he also wants to have an opportunity to become the all-time leading scorer in the history of the NBA, something I don't think he can accomplish anywhere else because he won't be the focal point of the offense as he will be in Utah. It certainly has to be a team in transition, and I think it, one of the major questions that was answered was Jerry Sloan saying that he would return to coach this team at 147 games last year, but we will have a far different face next year. They're always going to be a tough team under Coach Jerry Sloan. I mean, that's just his demeanor. He's going to demand that you go out there and play defense and be very tough. I like Karolinko a lot. I think he's a good young player. Harpering had a breakout year. I think when you look at, you know, to me, if Malone wants to stay or not, I hope it's just not for the money. I hope it's, I, I want to retire in Utah. I love Utah. But if he wants to win a ring, 
he might as well leave because they're not winning one in Utah. Well, then you start talking about what does this team need and what do they do at the point guard spot? Spot Mark Jackson came in behind Stockton on the assist list and played very productive minutes. The question is how long and how strong will they be at the point guard? Uh, not just with Mark, but an injury question for Raul Lopez, who they drafted in the first round a couple of years ago. Yeah, that's definitely got to be a huge need for this team. Also, they, I think they need frontline help. You know, I don't think Greg Osertag has really developed into the type of player they feel they need to be able to contend in that Western Conference. But again, as you get later down in that first round, you're more so looking at projects, not necessarily impact guys who can come in and make a difference on your roster. Utah running down to its final 30 seconds, and as we had anticipated before the draft on our previous show last night, this is the phase of the draft where international players will get selected by a lot of teams because you don't have to bring them in immediately. They could stay overseas, or you could take time to develop them. Let's see what the Jazz do here. Pick 19 of the 29 in the first round of the draft, and back up to NBA Commissioner David Stern. With the 19th pick in the 2003 NBA Draft, the Utah Jazz select Alexander Pavlovich from Serbia and Montenegro. The NBA invites 15 players to come to the draft, and they are here, quote, officially, unquote. Many agents bring some of their international clients over to the U.S. for workouts. They stay and come to New York, get to see the big city, get to be here for their draft moment. And the third person from Serbia and Montenegro is selected, Jay, in Pavlovich. Pavlovich is an athletic swingman. He can really run the floor. He's got long arms and great explosion skills. This kid can really jump. Good speed. He can shoot it off the catch or the dribble. He's got a lot of potential. He knows how to play. He's just 19 years old. He needs to put the ball on the floor a little bit better because it takes him two bounces to get somewhere, but he does shoot with NBA range. And I really like his athleticism. This kid can really shoot it, and that's a big plus in the NBA. If you can shoot it, you can find a spot for yourself. NBA position? Two or three. Two or three. I mean, he can play the two. They're going to have to find somebody for him to guard. That's the key. Pavlovich, how you say it? Here's Andy Katz with more. Andy? Well, a lot of workouts sometimes are overrated. Well, Pavlovich actually worked out for 22 teams. It may be a record, not only it certainly be a record in this draft, but it may be a record overall. One of those teams certainly was the Utah Jazz. Well, Andy, it also says something about uh, not just international basketball, but Serbia and Montenegro, a war-torn area to say the least. So many of the players have seen not just tragedy to their families, but have practiced in situations where they have heard planes overhead, bombs dropping. It's so hard to describe for any of us who live here in America. We know how shaken we were when September 11th hit on our shores, as these players essentially are a generation who grew up with war going on all around them. And to see three taken in the top 19 gives you a moment to realize how much they appreciate the opportunity to come to the NBA. Boston Celtics' second first round pick is coming up. It's pick 20 of the draft. And we continue from the greatest city in the world, New York, right after this. Boston is on the clock, 20th overall selection. Earlier they took Troy Bell, but perhaps hints that there may be a trade involved with that 16th overall selection. Trades are not announced until, if it's among draft picks, the players are selected by the teams involved, and then everything is legally cross-checked and I's and T's are dotted and crossed. To the commissioner for pick 20. With the 20th pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Boston Celtics select Dante Jones from Duke University. It makes five in the last six years that Duke has had a first overall pick, Dante Jones, from this New York City area. Will he be going to Boston? Let's go up to Andy Katz. Andy, trade talk here with Boston. That's right, That's right, Mike. Sources have told me that Boston will ship this pick, number 20, Dante Jones, and their pick at number 16 of Troy Bell to Memphis for the draft rights to Marcus Banks at 13, and the draft pick at number 27. So it's a Memphis and Boston swap. It would make sense all the way around Boston's need for a point guard. 
and you'd get Bell and Jones, two players to add to that Memphis roster, who can do a lot of things. We'll just talk about Dante Jones, the player, Jay. Rutgers, two years, only the second person to transfer under Mike Krzyzewski to do. Well, Dante Jones is a great athlete, a guy who can run the floor and attack the basket uh, in transition off the dribble, pretty good offensive rebounder, and when he plays like an athlete, he can be very, very good. That explosiveness is what makes him special. And with that athleticism, he can be a lockdown defender. If he concentrates on his niche in the league, which is defending, he can play in this league. The key is, can he hit open shots? He showed toward the end of the season that he could, but his athleticism is what makes him special. What he really needs to work on, though, he's got to be able to put the ball on the floor and prove that he can hit open shots. Dick Vitale, some people misinterpreted Dante Jones' play as dirty. Others would consider it as hard-nosed, tough style of play. Give us your read on Dante Jones. Well, I'll tell you, the one thing that he's got to really improve on, obviously, is his range as a shooter. But as Jay alluded to, his athleticism, ability to go north-south, tremendous quickness to the basket, makes him a potential outstanding defensive player as well with that athletic ability. And I think playing in a situation for Ubi Brown, can you imagine being coached by Mike Krzyzewski and now Ubi Brown, he's going to get the best coach in the world. And I'm telling you this, Troy Bell, I said last night, would be a sleeper. That's a great choice and a great selection for Memphis getting Bell. And I always believe in Jerry West. The guy knows what he's doing. And David West, we had him in New Orleans. Go to my mock draft. I'm not shocked. He'll replace P.J. Brown, who is going to end up playing with the Cavaliers. Eight seniors taken in the last, uh, or in the 20 picks, and six of the last nine picks have been seniors. So there is some stock and value to staying four years in school. Potential Boston-Memphis trade. We'll monitor that as the night goes on. Atlanta's on the clock at 21. We're back after this. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Carmelo Anthony. I'm Dwayne Wade. I'm Chris Bosh. America, you're watching. The NBA Draft. On ESPN. On ESPN. <laughs> no. It's not a Friday night. We're not on the West Coast, but Tom, Tom for Sprite. Mad. Skills. Is it? LeBron James skills have been shown on national TV in high school. Darko with the kiss skills. <laughs> the international greeting. And uh, he will be greeted in Detroit as the newest member of the Detroit Pistons. And the moment as well where Carmelo Anthony taken third overall in the 2003 NBA draft. He started his college career that ended up in New Orleans with a championship just next door in the arena here in Madison Square Garden. And some Sprite Mad skills <laughs> moving on to the NBA. This is pick 21. It belongs, it's a thing between us, don't mind. It's uh, Atlanta's pick number 21. How did the Hawks end up here? They fell out of the lottery with the Glenn Robinson trade. They end up at 21 overall with the deal that sent Jamal Tinsley to the Pacers. So it was Indiana's spot, 21 overall. It belongs to Atlanta. And here's the commissioner with the selection. With the 21st pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Atlanta Hawks select Boris Diaw from France. Anybody need some guards? A lot of guards have been taken in this draft. This is a player, Jay, who uh, withdrew his name from the NBA draft in 2001 and 2002. What kind of player is he? Well, he's got good skills. He's very long and he's an athletic defender. He's compared by some to sort of a, a poor man, Scottie Pippen. He's got the skills to be an outstanding defender in the league, but he's an average shooter at best. The long arms and the quick hands and his defensive aptitude are what got him up to this uh, pick. You know, he's got suspect shooting range and he's not a very good free throw shooter. And there are some who have said he is soft, but he is very talented. I wonder though, do, does he have the aptitude? Does he care enough to win? in the NBA. That's a question he's going to have to answer. This is an Atlanta team completely in flux. The uh, exclusive negotiating window for David McDavid to take over ownership of a complex situation, including the hockey team in the arena. That's expired. Conversation's still going on. We don't know who the head coach is going to be. Will they take the interim tag off Terry Stotts? A lot is in limbo in Atlanta, but Boris Jiao is now at Atlanta Hawks for the moment. Via the EA Sports video conference, we, we bring in one of the 50 greatest players in NBA history, Jerry West, president of basketball operations for the Memphis Grizzlies. Coach, let me ask you about this, uh, Coach. Jerry, let me ask you about this trade that has been reported with Boston, with Jones and Bell for Banks in the 27th overall pick. Is there truth to that rumor? 
Uh, yes, there's a lot of truth to that rumor. Uh, we have made that trade, and um, obviously one of our concerns down here was our backcourt in terms of defensive uh, play. You know, we have a great player down here, Michael Dickerson, who's been out really for two years. He's at, the health of him is uncertain. Uh, we have Wesley Person on a one-year deal down here, and we felt that this is a trade that we wanted to make. Uh, obviously, we had some interest in somebody up at 13, but we think that we got two players that from an athletic standpoint are right at the top of the list in, the, uh, in all the players taken in the draft, and we're very, very excited about what we did. Was the player up at 13, Petrus, who was talked about heavily in rumors for Memphis before the draft? You know what's really, what's really strange? I don't think we would have taken him at 13, to be candid with you. We, we, there's somebody else that we liked a little bit better, and I think when people start to hear rumors that people are interested in certain things, uh, you know, sometimes that takes somebody off the board for you that you don't want off the board. But he's, we think he's a great prospect, but uh, we could have traded up in the draft to have gotten him, but we didn't choose to do that. Who'd you want at 13? I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming down to Memphis for the FedEx St. Jude. I'll see you Saturday. Maybe you can tell me off the I'll, I'll, I'll see you Saturday, yes. <laughs> you got it, Jerry. Thank you very much. Jerry West, the president of basketball operations for the Memphis Grizzlies. And you want to talk about somebody who makes front office decisions. And I also think interesting, guys, the players who will end up down there in Troy Bell and Dante Jones, two four-year seniors. So guys with great basketball, proving Track record, success, Big East and ACC taken here by Jerry West. Well, and it shows you how deep this draft is. So when Jerry West is willing to make moves that deep in the draft to get people he really needs. And he talked about the defensive help, and that's been the one thing that Memphis has not done. They have not guarded people. And with Dante Jones in there, you'll get somebody who has the aptitude to guard. And I think Jerry West and Hubie Brown can get those guys to guard. I need 10 seconds from Greg because Banks would then be the pick for Boston. I know Celtic fans would like to know, again, the fit of Marcus Banks, a point guard in Boston. Well, he, he's, I really, he takes care of two needs. One, he defends it extremely well, but he also gives them that third scoring option, which they really desperately needed. He will allow this team, I think, to have an opportunity to get back to the top, the elites of that Eastern Conference. All right, the elite of the Eastern Conference this year was the New Jersey Nets. They eliminated Boston in the second round, moved to the NBA Finals, lost to San Antonio in six. Their biggest offseason question is Jason Kidd. As the Nets are on the clock, let's visit with our colleague Jim Gray in Cleveland. Jim. Jim hear me? Jim is talking, but I can't hear him. We will get back to Jim momentarily. In any case, they have two big things they need to do. One is to decide what's going to happen with Jason Kidd, listen to Jason's decision. And secondly, they have to tenure Kenyon Martin an offer to make sure that they lock him up for a long time. So the Nets have a lot on their plate this offseason. Let's see what Rod Thorne and the Brain Trust has decided for the Eastern Conference champs, who came within a couple of wins of the World Championship this year. Here is the Nets pick. With the 22nd pick in the 2003 NBA Draft, the New Jersey Nets select Zoran Planinic from Croatia. Planinic is 20. His team won the Croatian national title in 2001 and 2002. And as you've seen over the years, the quality of basketball played by the Croatian national team in international competition. Jay, if he was a good player in Croatia, he's a good player. He is a good player, a bit of an unknown. He's got good size at 6'7". He's got all-around skills, and he can play the point guard position, a quick release, a pretty good shooter with time, an outstanding young prospect, and his numbers are deceptive. His shooting numbers are not good, but Planinich can shoot the ball. And I think this was a solid pick by New Jersey because he was injured in an automobile accident, had an ankle problem, but from February on, Planinich played very, very well, and I think he's got the skills to make an impact over time in the NBA, especially with his size and skill level. You know, there is some irony here, guys. This is the sixth international pick taken in the first round, and being from Croatia, it brings to mind uh, really about 10 years and a week ago, one of the players who paved the way, along with Vlade Divac, for the success of international players, a Croat, and Drazen Petrovic, who anybody who played against him like you guys did or saw him play, his number was retired by the Nets, a special player. He was killed in a car accident in Germany about 10 years ago, and some irony and a chance to remember one of the really very good basketball players taken far too soon as another Croat is taken here by the New Jersey Nets. Let's go visit with Andy Katz for a minute. 
Well, this was probably one of the biggest locks in the draft. The Nets were definitely going to take Planinich if he appeared at their spot. He tweaked his back in their workout, and so there's a lot of teams that were wondering whether or not that was on purpose or not, but the back injury is real. He tweaked it. He didn't work out for anyone after that, and that's why the Nets took him. They've been locked in on him for a long time. And he becomes a New Jersey Net. They took a international player last year in the first round, who is not yet here. We talked about Nate on Chris to turn a little bit earlier on in the show. The Portland Trail Blazers are on the clock. This is a franchise that is in transition and flux. They have a lot of people in their draft room making decisions. Let's go up to David Aldridge now, who has some news. David? Well, Mike, you know, their general manager situation is still up in the air. I'm told that John Hammond, the player personnel director for the Pistons, will probably interview there in the next couple of days. I'm also told that the Blazers are going to decide on a general manager by Monday. Keep in mind, Chris Wallace, who's the Celtics GM player personnel director, pulled his name out the, uh, of their situation the last couple of days. They interviewed John Nash, the former Nets and Bullets and Sixers GM, a few days ago. So it pretty much looks like it's going to be Nash and John Hammond for that position in Portland. Bob Whitsitt is still on the job and is still there in the draft room. So is Paul Allen, Steve Patterson, the new president, and their coach, Maurice Cheeks. A lot of people in there putting their minds together for the Portland Pit. The international flavor that we mentioned of the 2003 NBA draft continues with six taken in the first round. But there is one player who has yet to be taken. The waiting and watching continues for Mache Lampe. Will you see the players who've been selected. The first five up to Zoran Planinich and add the Nets. Pick 22 overall before this night is done. We could have more than 14 international foreign-born players taken. That would be a record. The Blazers' choice next. Some of LeBron James' teammates from St. Vincent St. Mary's High School made the trip for this special night with their buddy, and they hang out to take a picture that will be long remembered by those guys. Uh, what a year they had the ride with LeBron James as well. The Portland Trail Blazers are on the clock. Pick 23 in this draft. Back to David Stern. With the 23rd pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Portland Trail Blazers select Travis Outlaw from Starkville High School in Starkville, Mississippi. Well, that's the second high school player taken. Obviously, James, the first one. And Jay, uh, oh, after LeBron James, there's no guarantee that you're going to see first rounders taken in high school. What kind of ability does this kid have? Well, he, he's very raw, but he's an outstanding run and jump athlete. He fills the lane. He's got very good speed and athleticism. And that's what gained uh, attention. He needs to improve his ball skills and his shooting range. But he, he's, he's kind of like a Darius Miles. He is very raw and, and not really basketball literate yet. He's got a lot to learn. But in a place like Portland, they can wait on him. He's not going to play right away so they can bring him along slowly, and frankly, they're going to have to. Much like Jonathan Bender, a player who said he was going to go to Mississippi State, he there grew up in Starkville, Mississippi State's uh, hometown, but he decides not to, and he uh, leaves for the NBA and goes to Portland. Tom, were you going to say something, Mr. Tolbert? You know, I'm looking at this pick, and I just... I mean, is this the perfect last name for the perfect team? I mean, come on! The Trailblazers, Outlaw, oh, it is just too perfect for me. No? Come on. I, I was going to let it go, but it was your best line, so I had to let you have it. Here's David Aldridge. <laughs> not over He's yet. on this pick. David? <laughs> uh, one thing to keep in mind, guys, the Blazers and the Nuggets have still been talking about a potential deal involving Marcus Camby, as we talked about last night in the pre-draft show. Outlaw could be the guy going to Denver as part of this deal. The Blazers also looking at other potential trades. We know Bob Whitsett loves to make deals. One deal that they looked at, ultimately passed on, involved Terrell Brandon. Reuben Patterson would have gone from Portland along with uh, Derek Anderson to Minnesota for Terrell Brandon. We all know Brandon may not play again with his, with his leg problems, and that was something that Portland looked at. They continue to look at possible deals to shake up that roster. But Dave, quickly, you mentioned Bob Woodson. I mentioned him. He's going to leave the franchise at the end of the month, just take over the Seattle Seahawks NFL president duties, but he's still actively involved in this draft, correct? That's right. He's not going to leave until the end of the month, and he's making a lot of those calls on making trades and making deals until they bring in that GM, as we just talked about. All right, the Lakers are on the clock. Let's bring in Jim Gray, who has news not just on the Lakers, but also the Nets, the last uh, two teams that met in the NBA Finals back in 2002. Jim? All right, let's first deal with the Lakers. I spoke to Kobe Bryant extensively. He just began rehabilitating his shoulder after the surgery. Kobe told me these are his words. He will become a free agent at the end of next season. He will opt out of his contract. 
He has not stated that before. Four reasons for this. He wants to know what Phil Jackson is going to do. Phil in the last year of his contract. He wants to see how Shaquille O'Neal plays this year and if he comes back, plays hard and is in shape. Third, he just wants to be free. He hasn't been free since 17 years of age. And fourth, he wants to see what the Lakers really do in terms of improving the team. Now, as for Phil Jackson, he was approached by Jerry Buss right after the season about extending his contract. He at that time declined. He didn't want to talk about it. I spoke to Mitch Kupchak about it. Mitch says that now Jerry West will speak to the team about extending his contract at the end of the season. Now, as for the New Jersey Nets uh, and what we were talking about just a few minutes ago before the audio problem, I spoke to Jason Kidd for about 20 minutes late this afternoon. Jason Kidd will visit San Antonio on July the 6th and the 7th. There are four teams, according to Jason, he says, that are in the hunt. His own team, New Jersey, Dallas, San Antonio, and the long shot is the Denver Nuggets. He wants to see where Alonzo Mourning's going. That's how Dallas comes in the picture. If they can get Zoe, he feels that they could make another trade and get in the picture for him. Basketball-wise, he feels it's probably best for him to play with Tim Duncan because that will make the game so much easier for him. Family-wise, Jemana is hooked and her heart's in New Jersey. He will decide by July 16th. Mike, back to you. Well, that's the big day for the Nets and via EA Sports video conference. Let's bring in Rod Thorne is making the decisions for the New Jersey Nets. Uh, Rod, I believe you were able to hear what Jim just said. Do you have any feeling from Jason Kidd that he's going to go out and check out these places, as Jim said, and try to make a decision within the next three or four weeks? You know, Mike, at this time, uh, I don't I don't know what his itinerary will be. Uh, he obviously becomes a free agent on July the 1st. Uh, he has stated repeatedly that he will uh, uh, weigh his options. Uh, uh, we're certainly hopeful that uh, he will decide to remain with us, but uh, we'll have to see what happens. Tell us about the uh, player you selected, Planinic from Croatia. Well, uh, he's a player that we've had our eye on for uh, the last year. Uh, we followed him. Uh, uh, we worked him out. Uh, we were very impressed uh, with his ability, uh, with his athletic ability, with his uh, ball handling ability. Uh, we think he'll be uh, a good all-around player uh, and, a, and the type of player uh, that our team can use. Rod, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. We've got your old boss, Mr. Stern, waiting for the Lakers pick. We don't keep David waiting. Thank you, Rod. Here is the commissioner Thank with you, Mike. the L.A. Lakers pick, which is number 24 overall here in the 2003 NBA draft. And then a lot of talk about the Lakers on the back end of that. With the 24th pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Los Angeles Lakers select Brian Cook from the University of Illinois. For some people who felt Brian Cook might have been a lottery pick earlier on in this 2003 NBA draft, slid down a little bit, Jay. Why would he slide, and do you think the Big Ten Player of the Year can come in and make an impact next year? I think he can make an impact on a really good team. The question I have about him is his rebounding ability. I don't think he rebounds at a very high rate. He only averaged about one offensive rebound per game. He, the, the knock on him, Mike, has been he's been soft throughout his career. He's very skilled. He can shoot the ball from the perimeter. He's got good passing skills, but he's never really done the tough things. This last year, he did. He went inside and started off inside, got to the free throw line much more often. But I think he's got to become a much more productive rebounder, and he's got to keep his strength and his intensity up. He's got to get a lot stronger if he wants to be an impact player in the NBA. His dad, Norm, was taken by the Boston Celtics, and that makes it since 1957 when they started keeping round by round of the draft seven father-son combinations taken in the first round no, no longer a part of uh, brian's life at least at this point for medical reasons with norm but still a father and a son taken in the first round here of the draft a lot has gone on we gotta get back to this laker conversation too what jim threw out there kind of opened a lot of eyes in la the jason kidd stuff as well we've got plenty to do the whole second round to pick and talk the detroit pistons are back on the clock they took darko milicic with the second overall pick of the draft they had another first round piece to add to a 50 win team back to tell you what the pistons do when we come back For Draft Track, as we welcome you back to the 2003 NBA Draft, the uh, old guys, quote-unquote, heard from eight of the first 24 seniors, only seven seniors taken in the entire 02 Draft. Four consecutive point guards taken, including Luke Ridenauer, who you saw there in his uniform, taken by the Seattle Sonics. Three players from Serbia and Montenegro, including the number two overall pick, Darko Milicic. 
Detroit is on the clock right now, and Mr. Lampy continues to wait to find out if he will be selected. One of the players hanging around here in the draft room, in the green room, I should say, Jay. He will be the top of your best available. Yeah, and, and Sophocles Scorzenitis, I, I think, could be a guy that would be taken late in this first round, early in the second round. He's 6'8". He is very strong. Carlos Delfino, a, another player from Argentina, I think a guy who uh, can really get up and down the floor, could be a pick. And a couple of high school kids. Andy Eby, who is out of Houston, he committed to Arizona, stayed in the draft, as did Kendrick Perkins, who committed to Memphis and stayed in the draft. Both those kids may have been promised they would be in the first round. I would expect they may be taken toward the end of this. And that's a big deal, because that means your contract is guaranteed it's a big difference of being taken in the second round where you don't have the guaranteed money and the time under that longer contract to develop as a first round pick there are a few picks left in the first round including the pistons at number 25 and back up to david stern with the 25th pick in the 2003 nba draft the detroit pistons select carlos delfino of argentina we were talking earlier about teams that have international scouting staffs that are strong. And Tony Ronzoni, the assistant coach for the Detroit Board, excuse me, scout for the Detroit Pistons, is probably right up there. He would grade out as one of the best, if not the best, international scout. Here's an Argentine, Delfino, taken by Detroit. He's a good athlete with a very good feel for the game. He's been hurt a little bit, and that limited his development this past year, but he's got good shooting form, and he shoots a good ball. He's really competitive, and he attacks off the dribble and in transition. I think he's got to get stronger. He's got to learn how to guard people, and he's got to he's got to improve that shot but Carlos Delfino I think a, a pretty darn good pick here at number 25 for Detroit who's not afraid at all as you mentioned of taking a foreign player and developing that player Delfino is from Argentina an Argentine guard Pepe Sanchez you might remember from Temple was on the Detroit roster and barely played at all this season but there is a contact there and now Delfino joins this roster let's bring in Andy Katz who followed all the international players Andy well he joins the roster for now although it'll be unlikely that he'll be on the Pistons roster next season his buyout is for a million dollars next season his agent saying it goes up to 800 or it goes down to 800,000 the next season and then down to 350,000 an NBA team is only allowed to pay $350,000 toward that buyout so they may keep him overseas for at least one to two more seasons. And Greg Anthony, this would be exactly what we see with good teams, especially a playoff team, already adding one international player and doing it here in round one late. Well, definitely. Remember, this is a team of Detroit Pistons won 50 games last year. They've already got the impact player in Darko Milicic. And also, this is a guy that they can develop. They don't have a lot of need for him right now. But two years down the line, this guy could come in. Great athleticism, the ability to score. He reminds me a little bit of Manu Ginobili because I think he's going to be a real gritty defender as well and add also with that offensive repertoire. Something we haven't been able to say in a couple of years in the first round. The Minnesota Timberwolves are on the clock. <laughs> the Joe Smith issue, they lost two first round first round picks in the last two years we'll lose it the next couple of years but have one here not to really knock the franchise all the way down we'll talk about the T-Wolves after their pick but the team that they played in the opening round of the playoffs the LA Lakers your reaction to what Jim Gray said about talking to Kobe Bryant and Kobe saying he would opt out after this year and become a free agent well what else could he say I don't think there's any question he has to say that because one I think it has to be a motivational factor for Shaquille O'Neal to come back and get to the level he was prior to this season hey if the Lakers win a championship next year it's all for not I think Phil Jackson probably does come back Kobe resigns but hey he's one of the great players in the league he has all the leverage right now there's no reason why he should not make that statement however I don't think it's going to deter the Lakers one way or the other you don't think Kobe Bryant would open his eyes and take a look around not if they're winning championships you know this team can they, they weren't that far last year you know as poorly as they were as many injuries as they had they still with one or two players will have an opportunity to get right back to that top tier level because they still have the two most dominant players outside of Tim Duncan in the entire league Tom well you know it's interesting the end of this year they struggle with Minnesota they lose to San Antonio and right now, they're, they're odds on favorite next year to win the NBA championship. I mean, that, that shows you what people think of, of the Lakers. And, and if Shaq gets back into shape, I can't argue with that either. There was a report in the LA Daily News a couple of weeks ago that Shaq had hired a Marine to sculpt him back into shape for the 2003 season. And adding Brian Cook could be at least a guy with some size who adds them, gives them some additional scoring. They need to score more. 
from more positions on the floor, and here's why. Only 11 times did they get a 20-plus point game, not from Kobe or Shaq. Derek Fisher seven times, Devin George a couple, once for Rick Fox, once for Brian Shaw. I remember Rick Fox had a really difficult injury that will not be easy to come back from for 2003-2004. So a lot of questions surround the Lakers. That will only add to the intrigue for the 2003-2004 season. We mentioned the Minnesota Timberwolves are on the clock. Thrilled, I'm sure, to be picking. Glad to be picking late, but you have a decision to make. They can use some people on their roster. Can they add quality here at 26? We'll tell you if they added quality after the commissioner tells you who they're picking. With the 26th pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Minnesota Timberwolves select Doody Eby from England. Jay, another one of the high school players born in England. His high school ball, ball as you can see there, in Texas. Andy Eby is really, he teases you. I, I'm intrigued by his potential. He's very athletic and he's got really long arms. He's almost 6'10". He's competitive and in the McDonald's game and in the practices, he guarded LeBron James, did a really good job. He was very confident and gave him some problems. He's not a shooter, but he can run the floor and he can get to the glass. He's a wiry athlete that's good around the basket. He kind of reminds you a little bit of a Jared Jeffries type player, but he's a the type of kid, it's going to take him a long time to develop. He is very very raw and needs to develop a skill set and he is not yet a shooter but he is a kid who's athletic and can play but he's going to need some time to develop Andy Katz on the high schooler third one taken here in round one Andy well actually the selection of Andy Abbey kind of shatters this workout myth because his workout during the Chicago pre-draft camp was at Hoops the Gym. It was attended by nearly every NBA team, and a lot of NBA scouts and general managers weren't pleased with the way the workout was run. They thought he actually didn't show enough emotion or energy in there, but clearly Minnesota saw something else. This is a crushing blow to Arizona because they thought he was going to Arizona, but ND, talking after that workout, said he wanted to stay in the NBA. And he is taken by the Minnesota Timberwolves, and they've had success with a high school player before, obviously, in Kevin Garnett. EA Sports Video Conference now take you up to two championship drives in Auburn Hills, Michigan, and the president of basketball operations for the Detroit Pistons, Joe Dumars. Most recent news first, Joe, the pick of Carlos Delfino, a guy who you would like to see stay overseas for the next coming season? You know what, that's an option that's, that's still open. Um, you know, we haven't made a final determination. We've talked to, uh, we've talked to Carlos and, uh, and, uh, and his people and uh, David Bauman, and, you know, it's kind of open right now. We're not sure, but we, we're very happy with the pick. We didn't talk to you about Darko Milicic, the number two overall selection. Tell us about the afternoon here in New York, game three of the Eastern Conference Finals, a game you lost, obviously, to New Jersey. The shoot-around's going on that morning, and you walk in and watch Darko Milicic work out. What was that like? Uh, you know, it was great. It was the first time for us to get a chance to see him in person and live. Uh, Tony Ranzoni had uh, scouted him extensively and, and knew him very well, but... Uh, you know, when he walked in and we got to see him work out for about 45 minutes, uh, you know, I walked out with John Hammond and I said, you know, it's a shame. We, we sit here and we watch some, some, somebody else's great young player that they're going to get. We had uh, no idea that we'd be getting number two pick that night. Joe, one last question. Uh, people around the NBA were a little bit surprised the week after the season ended that a coaching change was made. Rick Carlisle out about 50 hours later, Larry Brown officially introduced. With time that has gone since then, a chance for you to explain why the Pistons organization made a change after Rick won 50 games his first two seasons there. You know, sometimes you, uh, sometimes you come to, to a point in your organization when you're, when you're advancing and, uh, it's, you know, it's time to separate and go, both, uh, go our separate ways. Uh, Rick did a, a, a tremendous job for us. Uh, I, I don't think anybody can argue with the success that we had with Rick. But we got to a point where we felt like, you know what, it's probably best to, to part ways now on, on a good note. And, uh, you know, we're very happy with the choice that we made uh, with a Hall of Fame coach like Larry Brown. It's an exciting time, a 50-win team, a franchise re-energized, the number two overall pick, Larry Brown coming in, should be good basketball times in the Good Hoop City. Joe, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Thank you. Joe Dumars, the president of basketball operations and one heck of a player during his playing days and one of the players trying to make that very tough transition from being an elite player to an executive in this league.
Memphis is on the clock, but remember from what Jerry West told us and Andy Katz earlier, this player is likely going to be a Boston Celtic. We go up to Commissioner David Stern and remind you that trades are not announced until the picks have happened because legally, just like every other trade in the NBA, everything must be done on a legal standpoint before it can be announced. Here's the Memphis pick. With the 27th pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Memphis Grizzlies select Kendrick Perkins from Clifton J. Ozen High School in Beaumont, Texas. Let's bring in Andy Katz as we talk about yet another high school player taken and back-to-back -back high school selections and another one from Texas, Andy. And Mike, this was once again another promise. Kendrick Perkins was guaranteed that he would be selected in the first round to Boston. The question was whether or not he was going to take him for the Celtics. Perkins signed with Memphis. Memphis continues to get burned on the recruiting scene after Dewan Wagner left after one season. Quintel Woods, a JC player last season, was signed and then went in the first round. And Amari Stoudemire, they got a commitment out of him, and we all know what happened with him with the Phoenix Suns. One player, Andy, taken out of high school in the first round last year, four this year. And as mentioned, it looks like this will be a Boston Celtics selection with the trade with Jerry West and the Memphis Grizzlies. EA Sports Video Conference will visit with Danny Ainge momentarily, but first remind you of the specifics of this potential trade. Swapping two draft picks, one of the three teams that had two draft picks here. Danny Ainge is... Uh, this going to happen. Troy Bell and Dante Jones end up going to Memphis, and you get Perkins, who was just selected, and Marcus Banks. Is that uh, confirmed on your end as well? Yeah, Mike. That was a, a well, the guy we wanted all along was Marcus Banks, who's our number one choice, and Kendrick Perkins was a guy that we feel has a good chance to develop into a great player. That's our plan A going into this draft. All right, let me come back to Banks for a second. As you got in there, obviously you identified immediately when you made the move from Turner one night to in charge of the Celtics the next night. You needed a point guard to come in. Can Banks come in right away and play? I think he can. I think he has that kind of uh, ability to play defense, lead a team, uh, scoring, penetrating. But more than anything, you'll create tempo for us, and we want to really get out and run. Perkins, the high school kid, uh, people talk about promises for high school players taken in the first round. You have to see something you like if you want to take a guy with this pick. What about him do you see that is a growth potential? Well, I saw a great work ethic. We had him in for a workout, and I loved a kid that really wanted to get better. He adjusted quickly to some things that we were teaching him on the court, and I saw a great body. He's got a seven foot six wingspan, reaches nine four and a half flat footed, and uh, we think he has a tremendous upside. It's very unique to get a player of this size. Exciting time as Boston gets one of its favorite players running the front office. Danny, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mike. Danny Ainge joining us by EA Sports Video Conference. Some team that won the NBA championship is on the clock. San Antonio Spurs, David and Tim celebrated, now reworking a champion and trying to stay there. We'll see what Greg Popovich and company do as we continue from New York. You can log on to NBA.com for the exclusive 2003 draft section featuring live chats with the top prospects, press conferences, photo galleries, and more. Love it live, even on draft night. NBA.com. The world champion San Antonio Spurs on the clock, and here's the commissioner. With the 28th pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the NBA champion San Antonio Spurs select... Leandro Barbosa of Brazil. We continue to move towards the record number of international players taken in the 2003 draft. And again, the Brazilian Barbosa, who is now one of the official invitees, will be added to an already international crew headlined by the two players who start in the finals, Parker and Ginobili. This is a player you like, Jim. I do like Barbosa. He's a scoring guard. He's athletic, he's explosive, he can attack the basket off the dribble, and he's got long arms. So defensively, he can get you steals and deflections. He's got a little bit of a funky release on his shot and some questionable range, but he plays with abandon. He's a good passer, and he's long and quick. But I'll tell you, that, that shot sometimes looks like the worst shot in the Western Hemisphere, but I think he can work on it and in time be a really good player. This is somebody they can park overseas and bring over when he's ready to be a contributor. But it is going to take him some time. But I like this pick. I think he's got a lot of potential. Boy, international player, guard, taken at the 20th overall pick by San Antonio. We've heard that before. Two years ago in Tony Parker. Here's Andy Katz. There was a lot of talk about Barbosa over the last 24 hours. In fact, the tape was being circulated that we couldn't even get our hands on. A lot of teams were looking at it, even though he was going against lesser competition. 
That's what convinced a lot of teams to really think about Barbosa somewhere in this first round. He doesn't turn 21 until November, so this could be a steal once again for the Spurs at the back end of the first round. They have done a very good job. It goes without saying. Lampe still waiting. Mache, uh, he hoped to be a first rounder as he sits and waits. David Aldridge, maybe some reasons why he is still waiting. Well, that's right, uh, Mike. A lot, the NBA informed teams today that uh, as far as they're concerned, FIBA, which is the International Basketball Association, has not cleared Lampy to play in the NBA. As far as FIBA's concerned, he still has two years left on his deal with Real Madrid. After that, Real Madrid has an option for several more years and there's a very large buyout involved as well. So teams have kind of shied away from it because as far as FIBA has told them and told the NBA, they don't consider him clear to play yet. Which makes it a very odd situation. And just to go over the headlines of that without getting you lost in the contract minutia, when players sign these international contracts, they often have to be bought out by the NBA teams. Andy told you that a little bit earlier. Most times you can get out of it and it gets worked out. But some of the teams want to hold out to the last minute. Maybe the contracts are worth with so much money that it's too much of a bullet for the NBA teams to bite. Lampe could be in that situation. International contracts and international law coming into effect. How the NBA and how the NBA draft has changed. One team with a great international influence is the Dallas Mavericks, led of course by all-star Dirk Nowitzki. They make the final selection of round one when you come back to the draft. Back at the 2003 NBA draft, final pick of the opening round belongs to the Dallas Mavericks, and we will find out who will complete round one, who will be the last guaranteed contract. Let's go back up to Commissioner David Stern. With the 29th pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the Dallas Mavericks select Josh Howard from Wake Forest University. The second round of the 2003 NBA draft will be conducted by Russ Granick, the Deputy Commissioner and Chief Operating Officer of the NBA, and the Knicks are on the clock. <laughs> I'm handing it off to Russ and giving him the Knicks for his welcoming. Thank you, Commissioner Stern. Well, Josh Howard from Wake Forest selected Dick, a guy who grew up in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, went to school there, and now he's drafted by the Mavs. I'll tell you, Mike, he's a great choice for them because he's a guy that can defend, utilize the full court. He's a guy that will come off the bench, and he's a winner. He's a kid that's a winner, four-year player. I think the Lakers made a great choice getting Mr. Cook when they did. And E.B., and I also look at Perkins, the high school kids, I don't know the thinking process that you accept to go late as you're looking at Howard here running the court. I don't. We watch him on a defensive end. He's really a good defender. He's got long arms. But I don't know, guys, if you talked about, you looked at Perkins, you looked at E.B. going in the first round late. Had they gone to school and played for Lute Olsen and for John Calipari, they could have been like Bosch and Carmelo Anthony and moved way up next year. Impatient, I think they made some mistakes when you look at financially. And I don't want to hear about Kobe Bright. He's going nowhere. If you believe that guy will leave the Lakers, forget about it. It's not going to happen. He'll be a Laker, and he'll be a Laker forever. Don't believe any of those stories. And Josh Howard will get the chance in Dallas to go up against him in the Western Conference. Josh Howard, a kid whose legs were so crooked at birth, they had to be broken to be straightened. Bet you they didn't think then that he'd be a first-round pick in the NBA draft. One of the many great individual stories that this 2003 draft has brought about. Headlines on the draft, round one. LeBron James, the high school player, taking overall number one. The Milicic family able to celebrate. Dad, a policeman, and Darko, now a Detroit Piston. Carmelo Anthony, bound for the Rockies. Chris Bosh, there were rumors if Toronto would get out of the fourth spot. They did not end up taking the Georgia Tech star. The Kansas guys, Heinrich and Collison, Wade and Kirk Heinrich, was selected earlier than maybe some thought by Chicago. The Knicks took Mike Sweetney from Georgetown in the first round. They're on the clock to start round two. 